Trump sent me a message saying that you did it. So after I'd already messaged this girl, like, oh, I think I know who found your money. I've got to leave, blah, blah, blah. He's going around saying that I did it. After this girl's little sister explicitly told him that I didn't fucking do it because she knew very well that I was too busy taking care of the crazy. Hayden? Hayden called himself that? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty rich. I think the audio isn't good. You're all the way turned down. Oh yeah, I turned all of them down when you were on the video call. That way, nothing would wind up coming through. Uh, it's worth playing, I would say. Pretty entertaining. Too bad the... Ben Swan article doesn't add anything to like their article basically says what he says but doesn't explain anything of what led up to it what he said after let me let me see if I can find a good Danica what do you want to talk about um, now that I see this it sounds like they may have already gotten discussed but I'll throw it out anyway Oklahoma could ban hoodies in public, fine five hundred dollars under proposed law. Yeah, it's hard to talk about proposed laws because they don't always go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just a kind I'd of a ridiculous headline. Okay. If it happens, we need to talk about it. Yeah, it's uh well let me see. that article was from it was from January, so let's see if I can find it. If there's any uh oops, if there's any update. Uh, the other one I have is freedom of speech, bad clash of anger over four words at South Portland High School. Uh, three students who made others wear the right not to say the Pledge of Allegiance are stunned by an emotional reaction. Okay, I've got that one too, so mark that. Let's definitely talk about that. Pull it up. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look like that there's very much update about that. Let me see. Let's check. No, it doesn't, look like, it doesn't look like there's any other news of that. So I'll close that one out. Politician uh, requests an interview with media, then shoots himself. <laughs> what? Hold on. Say that again. Uh, St. Louis, Tom Schweitz, Missouri's Republican state auditor and leading contender for the governor's office in next year's election, died Thursday after apparently shooting himself in his Clayton home. Sudden death of the second term auditor shocked and saddened the state's political establishment after a while the race for governor barely a month after it began. Uh, earlier in the day, his wife was in another room when she heard her husband making phone calls followed by a gunshot. All right, so the Ron Paul, <coughs> the Ron Paul Institute okay. for Peace and Prosperity has a good write-up about the uh, Michael Hayden thing. This libertarian thing? Yeah. Okay.
So what was the headline you read about that politician that shot himself? Well, the headline I had initially read made it sound like he actually did it in front of the media, but that wasn't the case. You That's what, what I thought. thought. You remember the, the video from a long time ago where the dude Dwyer. takes the fucking gun out and yeah. the patent paper bag? Here we go. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free. All you have to do is call 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Drop on by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you. With you tonight, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. Plus, we've got Skype. You can call into the show with Skype by using username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request over first. It will be approved. And then after that, it'll be easy for you to call us on Skype. And if you can do it on Skype, then that's preferred, because you'll generally sound better that way. Coming up, Danica, you've got a story about some students in Maine who are in hot water over their viewpoint about the Pledge of Allegiance. That's right. I want to talk about that for sure coming up here tonight. But, uh, Daryl, you've actually shared some video with me here. It's very short. It's about a minute long. Yes. And it actually has this character, General Michael Hayden, who you, if you've been paying attention to the Edward Snowden revelations over the last, what, almost two years now, uh, since Snowden came out with that information. Yep. Uh, the just amazing and damning information about the NSA and its role in spying on not just uh, people all around the globe, but also uh, all kinds of Americans. And it's basically spying on everyone and having the potential to be able to, you know, go into your computer as long as they knew your IP address or your email address. And uh, they had all kinds of different, you know, outrageous things that they could do to invade your privacy. And this Michael Hayden guy, he was the guy who was in charge of the NSA at the time the Snowden revelations happened. I remember him. He was the person who was speaking out, responding to Snowden, and the way Snowden was doing things. Of course, for those that may, may not know who we're talking about, uh, who is Edward Snowden? Edward Snowden, I would say, is one of the uh, biggest whistleblowers of all time as far as... Uh, the level of information that he wound up leaking. He leaked an untold number of documents in 2013. We still haven't seen it all. Right. Uh, leaked these to journalists from The Guardian and The New York Times. Glenn Greenwald being one of the journalists. Uh, Greenwald, of course, has since left The Guardian and started up The Intercept with a couple of other journalists. And a lot of this uh, that has been revealed by uh, Greenwald and others who got the documents from Edward Snowden have confirmed things that libertarians were being called crazy mm. for suggesting even three years ago. Like mass surveillance. Mass surveillance, uh, government you know, getting phone records, uh, metadata, uh, being able to read emails and the like and well you know documents have come forth showing that yeah they're doing exactly that and it's even a little worse than that because they have basically made deals with all of the tech companies that make software and hardware in the united states to where there has to be a back door to where the nsa can get in and you know, of course, the federal government is saying, well, this hasn't harmed the American tech companies. But if you look at sales records from you know the last two years, it actually has harmed them. Oh, wow. Uh, because the sales have declined a little bit. <clears throat> so Hayden, if you recall, was the guy answering the allegations, answering the evidence uh, that Edward Snowden, because Snowden had NSA memos and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he had PowerPoint presentations from the NSA as to how some of their spying tools worked. And, you know, he's some really damning stuff. And, and so. some of the things were very interesting. Uh, and I applaud Glenn Greenwald for releasing the info the way he did. Because he Stripping would release yeah. little bits at a time and let the NSA, you know, come up with some kind of excuse. Right. And then he'd come up with something that showed that their excuse was bunk. 
And then they would come out with another excuse, and then he'd come out with something else. Not just excuses, just lies. I mean, Hayden, uh, the NSA boss man at the time, he would just, you know, he'd tell lies to cover up, you know, the truth that right. Edward Snowden was coming out with, and then Snowden's next release, as you pointed out, would counteract those lies and show that they're lying again. And they just kept getting caught in, you know, cover up after cover up and lie after lie. I mean, this guy is, this Hayden is a scumbag. Yes. So now what's what's happening, Daryl? Because should I play the video first, or should you read the piece that you have? Uh, let me read the piece, okay. and then play, I, I'll point to you when I want you to play the video. All right. Uh, so the story here comes from the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. It's written by one of the writers over there, Adam Dick. He says, Michael Hayden, who served in turn as director of the NSA, principal deputy director of national intelligence, and... <coughs> and director of the CIA from 1999 through 2009. Director of the CIA. I didn't know that about yes. him. That's okay. interesting. Elicited laughs and a loud jeer of, no, you're not. Yeah. In response to his assertion Friday during the conservative political action conference debate that he is, quote, an unrelenting libertarian. All right. So the clip doesn't start right there, but it's, uh, it's fairly short. Here we go. He's on stage, by the way, with uh, Judge Napolitano. So we don't know the circumstances, at least yet, about where this clip sort of came out of. But here it is. All right, all right. So a politician, and he's a politician, just because he's not running for office doesn't mean he's not a politician. Right. Um, <clears throat> when a politician says, let's talk about facts, look out, he's probably about to lie to you. And uh, I, I haven't found the actual name of this panel that they had, but Lou Dobbs was the moderator. Okay. And it was this Michael Hayden guy debating Napolitano. Judge Andrew Napolitano. Gotcha. All right, continuing here. All right, now, before we get to his next line, if the crowd hadn't applauded when he said the judge is an unrelenting libertarian, would he have said what he's about to say? Ask That's a that. good question, and I also find it odd that there are people applauding the term libertarian here because it's the it's not a libertarian conservative convention. political action conference. And CPAC has been known to not be exactly friendly to libertarians. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean there aren't some of them in the audience. Right. There, there are. You know, so there, there are libertarians that will attend this thing. But the why. organizers are blatantly hostile yeah. to libertarians. Why would they give uh, money the, to this group? I don't uh, know. Log cabin Republicans have been told that they can't Those attend. Are the gay Republicans, right? Uh, Go Proud, which is another uh, gay Republican group, mm -hmm. they have been told, like, you're not welcome here. But yet, a lot of libertarians will still go, and... Well, this is D.C., right? Like, they're, you know, these are Beltway libertarians. No, right. like, there are libertarians that travel to CPAC uh -huh. so that they can vote in the straw poll... To you know, try to send some kind of message of the libertarians are taking over the Republican Party. Do you think that they're just looking for a fight, maybe? <laughs> no, there are actually people that call themselves libertarians that think that you can take over the Republican Party. All right, let me get to the next line. So ask yourself, when he says this, would he have said it had the audience not responded positively toward the word libertarian? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and now he's getting cheers. Well, there's a large audience here. Just because some people cheered for Libertarian doesn't mean the same people are cheering him on in the second place. But then again, maybe they are. 
it's C right. But you know, like these are the same people. You know, for the most part, Republicans are the people that booed Ron Paul for quoting the Golden Rule during a debate. All right, let's come back with more here. Uh, you've got more analysis yes. on the way. Eight fifty five, four fifty three. That's the toll free number. You can bring up anything you'd like here on Free Talk Live. I'm not seeing the libertarians are just looking for a good troll. Who's looking for a good troll? Libertarians, going to be Republican or Could be. <laughs> conventions. I don't know why you don't want to give those people your money, though. Oh, I agree. It's retarded. Gross. That's offensive to people that actually are retarded. Ask me if I care, Daryl. He's not going to ask me. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Mm. Why is this computer not working? Come on. Did you hear that Leonard Nimoy died? Ian? This is so sad. People get old. It's so sad. At least he got to be in another Star Trek movie. Yeah. Was he in the second new one? Didn't they have two new ones? Yes, yes, he was. He was also in the second one. Mm -hmm. I'd only seen the first one, but she's. Daryl's favorite character died. How many Star Trek things have they had now? Like a hundred? I meant the two her. new ones, right? I don't know how many of them there are total. Like, there are just two minutes. There's like there's at least lot. 12, right? Uh, that sounds believable, but I don't really, I don't know. I mean, are Wait. we talking about the original crew? Are we talking about like the all the generation? generation? No, there were six um, from the original series. And there was a lot of next and generation ones, And there was ones, right? four next generation ones, so that makes it 12. There you go. Good call. A you have trekking? No. <laughs> well, Star Trek, what can I say? What about Star Wars? No. No? What's your preference? Do you have a preference? Spaceballs. I like them both for different reasons. Star Wars is a, like yeah, a they're... fantasy, and Star Trek is more than likely could be a reality at some point. I've never been a huge fan of them both, but I've enjoyed them when I've seen them. Have you seen Blade Runner? When I was a kid. I haven't seen it as an adult. Blade Runner. Back. What are you talking about? This is Free Talk Live, and if you believe for a moment that the NSA director, former NSA director, I wonder what sweet golden parachute kind of gig he got after that, 
Uh, if you believe that he's actually a libertarian, as he's now claimed on stage uh, in a debate with Judge Andrew Napolitano, would love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE here. And by the way, you can go to freedomsphoenix.com, get some real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com and get signed up for their free daily dispatch. Get the news over at freedomsphoenix.com as we continue here. Let me just recap this uh, audio clip here, Daryl. I know you've got a story. Where is it from, by the way? Ron Paul? Uh, this is the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. So this is the uh, former director <laughs> of the National Security Agency. And former head of CIA. Yeah, for, a lot, for a number of years, apparently. Uh, Michael Hayden, this is what he had to say about himself after saying that Judge Napolitano is an unrepentant libertarian. The crowd at this CPAC conference doesn't go wild, but there's enough applause to where he, he then says... I mean, that's not a bad response. I think it's that, that part's more confused. <laughs> I, I love... Unrelenting libertarian, he describes himself. Uh, I, I love that you can make out that people were saying, No, you're not! Yeah. So the article here continues. It says, It's hard to imagine a more preposterous assertion from Hayden, <laughs> who defends the U.S. government's extensive torture program, many of the revolting details of which were recently revealed in a partially released Senate Intelligence Committee report. Well, if he was in and, charge of the CIA, he's certainly not unfamiliar with uh, torturing people. And oversaw the NSA mass spying program. Libertarians, of course, oppose such violations of individual rights. If Hayden had changed his mind and become an opponent of massive rights violations that intelligence agencies committed under his oversight, his unrelenting libertarian claim might not be so ridiculous. However... Sure. However, Hayden is a steadfast defender of the violations. After NSA whistleblower... Yeah, Edward it'd be Snowden, one thing... Hold on, where are you going? It'd be one thing if he were to say, you know, I was wrong, and I couldn't get the perspective until after I left office and the power left my hands, and now I'm finally clear-headed. Uh, I've taken off the... What is it? It's rose-colored glasses if everything looks good, but like violence-colored glasses or something, the state glasses or whatever. Hat I've, or something? I've taken off this this uh, you know this awful cloak of the state, <laughs> and, uh, and now I see the error of my ways. But he hasn't said anything like that. He's claiming to, on one hand, be a libertarian, an unrelenting libertarian, and then in the same breath saying that, well, the Constitution says we can do all this stuff. Let's keep torturing and spying, because freedom. Because it's for the common good. Yeah. Uh, the article continues. <coughs> After NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden revealed information about the U.S. government's mass spying program, unrelenting libertarian Hayden joked about putting Snowden on President Obama's targeted kill list. Wow. Whoa. And when Senator Dianne Feinstein, who then chaired the Senate Intelligence Committee, started making some critical comments about the torture program, the unrelenting libertarian <laughs> dismissed Feinstein's concerns as the senator just being, quote, unquote, emotional. <laughs> Hayden continues oh, to defend man. U.S. government encroachment of individual rights. In fact, that he that was his purpose in participating at the CPAC debate in debating Andrew Napolitano. His the purpose Fox, was to defend the actions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Napolitano, of course, the Fox News senior judicial analyst and a Ron Paul Institute advisory board member. Uh, the thing here continues. It says they were debating the U.S. government's mass spying program. Hayden, as expected, presented a blanket defense of the program. At the beginning of the debate, Hayden drew applause and cheers when he called Napolitano an unrelenting libertarian. And then when he said, so am I, it got the very different audience reaction. Yeah, I was just on a show called Peaceful Anarchism and doing an interview there and was talking about the term libertarian and how it has been just 
destroyed in my yeah. adult lifetime. Oh, absolutely. Um, my experience with it has been that, you know, back when I became a libertarian in around the year 2000, a little, a little before that, uh, during the Harry Brown campaign for, uh, for libertarian presidential candidate, that was back when it meant something to me to be a libertarian. And then they started, the libertarian party started accepting all these people into it who were cr pretty clearly not libertarians. You mean Bob Barr? Bob Barr. Bob Former CIA, uh, right? Bob Barr. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it worked for him to say I'm a libertarian. Well, and and I don't, I didn't really believe him on that one, but at the very least, there he was willing to say he was wrong about the war on drugs, right. and you know he had at least tried to pretend like he was more libertarian, but it wasn't impressive to me. Right. And Bob Barr was just uh, in a long line of people who were using the label libertarian, I thought, inappropriately. And it's only gotten worse over time, you know, whether it be talk show hosts like Neil Bortz, who on one hand claim to be a libertarian and sound fairly libertarian, but then at on the other hand support the 90s, war. At least in the 90s. Neil Bortz sounded very libertarian. He, he was opposed to Clinton's wars. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's so when Bush took over. All of a sudden. Bush took over. Well, now you know, like we have to have these wars because not eleven. Yeah, terrorism. So um, it, it's just been frustrating to watch the term be sullied over time. And I mean, this is almost a pinnacle. I mean, how how much worse could it be? Who else could? Who worse than General Michael Hayden? Barack Obama is now a libertarian. I thought Hillary Clinton was a uh, libertarian now. No, please don't tell me she's used that word, has she? I, d I don't know if she has used that word. I was trying to <laughs> troll Daryl oh, there. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I have heard some people use the term in such a very broad manner to where everybody except for Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin are libertarians. Yeah, I've got a real problem. If, with if you want to you know, reduce any government budget by a penny... Well, you're some more supporting smaller government, therefore libertarian. Now, this Hayden character, I don't think, would have gotten on stage and said, I am a staunch voluntarist. He would not have gotten up there and made that statement because that would be easy enough to disprove. But because the word libertarian has sort of taken on all this baggage, anybody can just claim it. And as long it's as they... recognizable. Yeah, well, yeah, and as... Good or bad. As long as they, you know, are libertarian on one issue, that seems to be good enough for a lot of people to just right. accept that. that. That's part of what uh, Gary Johnson's entire presidential campaign was on in 2012, was be a libertarian with me if you agree with me on one issue. Whatever the issue is, if you agree with me, you're a libertarian. So Danica, were you ever a libertarian? Uh, prior to, uh, oh, you mean like being racist? Well, no, I grew up in a very conservative Republican household. Um, and then as I got older, I started feeling more independent because I could see some issues the Republicans had, some issues that the liberals had. And then as I started getting into Ron Paul in college and I started paying more attention to it, that's when I started turning to more liberty-minded um, from uh, libertarianism. 855-453. That's the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts. You think this guy, this what are your thoughts on this Hayden character? It's ridiculous uh, to me. 855-453 in the term libertarian. I mean, do you still use it for yourself? Do you feel like it's been worn away? It's free talk live. I'll hoot the video post out. Was your family uh, conservative or liberal growing up? Conservative. Yeah. How about you, Daryl? Quite conservative, too, since you lived in Definitely, the Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, this J guy that showed up last night, was that the dude that kind of looked like a younger, hippier Marcus? I wouldn't say any younger, but yeah. he looks like Marcus with long hair. Yeah. Yeah. He's back. We're good. He was only here for two weeks last time, so who knows how long he'll last this time. Yeah, that guy was definitely kind of weird. He made me super uncomfortable last night. Oh, my God. 
I never want to relive what happened last night. Hmm. Hopefully he won't come banging around again tonight. That was super weird. What time was was he banging around? Early, like 7.30. And then we brought him in here and he's like yelling stuff and talking. He's sitting mm -hmm. in that chair and, you know, Mike Three's off. I didn't invite him on the show, but I did mm -hmm. give him a pair of headphones hoping he would just sit there and, and, and listen. listen. Right? And he's just like talking like he's on the show or something. And I go, I'm going, you know, trying to. You know. And he doesn't, he didn't take that direction yeah. at all. Yeah. I mean, he just kept coming back with talking, and like, then he started coughing. Mm -hmm. It just, it was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, it was the most distracted I've ever been. I think doing the show, and so during after the first segment of him doing this, I'm like, all right, dude, I'm gonna take you next door. We'll see if there's some folks over there. I went over to the CAC. Of course, everyone's over at the capitalist house, and so no one was at the CAC. I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, I guess I'll bring you back. But uh, look. You can't talk, okay? Mm -hmm. And he agreed to it. And then, of course, you know, went right back to doing the same thing that he was doing previously. Yeah. I don't think he was purposely trying to sabotage the show. I think he was just, I think he's he's not just all there. out of it. Yeah. He's not all there. He's also super paranoid. So basically, mm -hmm. um, Rich came over, and you, I think, also kind of yeah. managed to pull him away in the midst of that second segment and take him across the street, where apparently he proceeded to kiss Manic and someone else. He, like, gave him, like, a, apparently, like, a really wet kiss on the cheek, yeah. Who was the other person? Who... Danny. Oh, and Danny. Mm -hmm. yeah, he oh, that's Danny. interesting. Danny was like, I'm not sure how to feel about this. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, but I'm like, he's disrupting the show. I don't feel comfortable around him. So Rich kicked him out of the capitalist house, then just you brought in, him back over here. Just in time for the show to end. I'm like, okay, at least it was, like, 10 o'clock, and I had yeah. to, like, be stuck. And so then he was like, oh, I've got all these stories to tell. And I said, all right, well, tell us one of your stories. And, and then he's like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. And then he just, like, sort of starts talking about some fucking unintelligible nonsense mm -hmm. that you couldn't possibly follow if you really wanted to. Like, even worse than Manic, you know? Sometimes she's hard to, to follow. But this guy is like, I don't know if he's just constantly tripping hard or, like, has tripped too hard for too long or, like, what his deal is. But he's fucked up in the head. And so he would try to tell this whatever story he was trying to tell and just kind of trail off after a while. And then he didn't want to talk about whatever it was mm -hmm. at that yeah, point. Yeah, he stopped telling him whatever it was. And if you'd ask him, like, basic questions, he'd just kind of stare at you. Like, he didn't want to answer, you uh -huh. know, like, where, do, where are you living? You know? It was like pulling teeth to get the guy to admit that he's staying over at the Keen Inn. He was like, oh, I just thought I could crash on the couch. Like, no, sorry, we can't. Yeah, you can't do that. Happen. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450. Free coming up, Pledge of Allegiance stirs controversy at a uh, Maine high school, Portland area, I think. That is correct. Danica, you have the story about that. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. We've also got this ridiculous story uh, coming from the Ron Paul Institute, I think it was, Daryl? Yeah. Where, I, th I think the article is actually fairly well written, uh, just kind of poking fun at this guy, uh, former NSA, former CIA guy, uh, Michael Hayden, the NSA director. Was he also the director of the CIA as well? Did you say that? that he, yes. He was, uh, he was the director of the NSA, the principal deputy director of the National Intelligence and director of the CIA from 1999 through 2009. This guy is a bad, bad man. I mean, this guy is as government-oriented, as state-oriented as they could possibly come. And he's claiming to be an unrepentant libertarian. Wasn't that the word he used? Unrepentant? Unrelenting. Unrelenting. Okay, well, that's very similar. An unrelenting yes. libertarian, that's which <laughs> is the most ridiculous claim you, I could possibly even imagine. I mean, at least Barack Obama could claim that he did something for gay marriage or... Uh, no, he that's can't. about it. No, no. Oh, what was it? Gays in the military. That was what Barack Obama did, even though that's not particularly... That was terrible. Bill Clinton! Was it? <laughs> what did he do? Didn't Barack Obama do something libertarian? I felt like he did something at some point. Well, the the don't ask, don't tell thing was kind of like done away with, but that wasn't Obama's doing. Okay, that was Congress. He did and, come and he out, like, signed it. Obama did come out and uh, admitted to smoking pot, right? And then, <laughs> yeah, pro right. then proceeded to not actually do anything to schedule and marijuana. No. Also said. And maybe a little bit of blow. <laughs> and as Penn Gillette has mentioned several times, if you're saying you've done 
a little bit of blow, then you've done a lot of cocaine. Mm -hmm. Because if you've only done it once, you don't do a little bit of. Blow. You'll say, "I tried it once. It was the yeah. most messed up thing I've ever done." That's a great. Point. If you do it a lot, oh yeah, I've done a little bit of blow. Mm -hmm. So, is there more to share from the Ron Paul Institute on this? There is not. Okay, so uh, Michael Hayden claiming to be a libertarian on stage in a debate with Judge Andrew Napolitano. I mean, who could take this seriously? And just to remind people that you know may not have heard part of the last segment, this is the same guy that quote unquote joked about having put Edward Snowden on Barack Obama's targeted kill list. Yeah, what an awful person. And yeah. told Diane Feinstein that she was being quote unquote emotional when she was critical of the torture program. I want to make it clear. I wasn't claiming Barack Obama's a libertarian. I was just trying to argue that Barack Obama would be less offensive claiming as a libertarian than this guy is. I mean, head of the CIA, head of the uh, the NSA. This guy is as bad as they come. At least Barack Obama can claim he was a mere senator uh, prior to being president. Right, right. So share your thoughts with us here, toll free at 855-450 free. And if you want to get some Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, go visit ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or in Canada, ExpressCoin.com will hook you up with cryptocurrencies. All you have to do is send in a money order, check, or send them a wire transfer. Go to ExpressCoin.com. They've got great rates, and the rates are 0%. If you use coupon code FTL, then you can get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency of choice with no fee. So don't forget to use coupon code FTL over at ExpressCoin.com. That again is ExpressCoin.com. Plus I've got an app for your smartphone, which you can download easily over at ExpressCoin.com. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. So here's a story about, just a quick, kind of a quickie here from St. Louis Post-Dispatch, STLToday.com. Tom Schwitch. Missouri's Republican state auditor and formerly leading contender for the governor's office in next year's election died Thursday after apparently shooting himself in his Clayton home. Wow. The sudden death of the second term auditor shocked and saddened the state's political establishment and roiled the race for governor barely a month after it began. Clayton Police Chief Kevin Murphy told reporters in a news conference Thursday afternoon, quote, what we know at this point suggests an apparent suicide. He said there was nothing to support anything other than that at this point, and that the man died from a single gunshot wound. He said he didn't know whether Schwitch left a note. The chief said an autopsy and investigation is pending. Earlier in the day, police told the Post-Dispatch that Schwitch's wife was in another room of their house when she heard her husband making phone calls, followed by a gunshot. Schwitch had been shot in the head, said the source. A 911 call was made from the home at 9.48 in the morning, seven minutes after Schwitch had left a voicemail requesting an interview with a post-dispatch reporter. So he calls the media, this very newspaper that's reporting on this, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, calls a reporter, and then seven minutes later, someone calls 911, presumably his wife, to report that her husband has shot himself. Do we have any sort of uh, audio of the message left? Was he in distress or anything? Did he sound perfectly normal? Any indicator like that? You know what? They actually do have the uh, the post dispatch actually has the voicemail here. Um, I will do my <coughs> best to pull it up. Let me tell you a little bit more about the story. Uh, according to the report, Schwitz was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead, etc., etc. Uh, the post-dispatch interview, which was also to include an associate press reporter, was set at his Clayton home for later in the day. So why would he set an interview for later on? Uh, here's the, the call. He definitely sounds 
like he's having a tough time. Distressed. Yeah, his and voice is shaky there. What, what I was thinking when you had mentioned this story earlier is what sort of political scandal is this guy involved in? Mm. Because generally it's political scandals that lead politicians to kill themselves. But they don't kill themselves very often, right? I mean, like, how often does this happen? In fact, I don't think it happens often enough. Yeah, but I mean, uh, how often does uh, does it happen? Because, you know, I don't support people going out and killing politicians, but when they off themselves, I mean, who can really complain about this? <laughs> well, it's by another question. Was he already dealing with a lot of stress? Something really bad happened? Well, it's stressful I mean, to run for political well, office. Obviously, but I mean more than just the typical day-to-day -day life of a politician. Was there stuff going on at home? Was there, you know, was he getting some sort of threats from the outside? I mean, what was causing him to be so distressed? And you'll note that in his voicemail, he said that this is a religious, religious. issue, yeah. not a political issue. And there's a story over at People that asked the question, did Missouri politician Tom Schweitz shoot himself over rumors that he is Jewish? Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, that just doesn't seem like a reason to kill yourself. So, yeah, I've not had a chance to read yeah. the entire thing. You know, the first several paragraphs are basically recounting what was said in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch uh, talks about the voicemail that was left. Uh, so, you know, I, I'll definitely wind up uh, scrolling through here it's, when it's, I get the chance. There's a little more here later on in the story, just kind of skipping down where everybody's like, oh, I didn't see it coming. He was so nice. You know, the usual okay, stuff so that you hear. Apparently no history of any sort of depression or anything like that. I mean, if so, it's not being mentioned here thus far. In several conversations via text and phone in the days leading up to Thursday morning, uh, which is, again, is yesterday, Schwich told me the messenger that Hancock mentioned to people in passing that Schwich was Jewish. Hancock, I guess, is uh, John Hancock, the newly elected chairman of the Republican Party there in Missouri. Schwich wasn't Jewish. He is a member of the Church of St. Michael and St. George, an Episcopal congregation in Clayton. Switch told the messenger that he believed the me uh, mentions of his faith heritage were intended to harm him politically in a gubernatorial primary in which many Republican voters are evangelical Christians. He said his grandfather was Jewish and that he was very proud of his connection to the Jewish faith. Your thoughts are welcome here. 855 450 free. Why did this guy shoot himself? And was he planning on doing it in front of the media but then chickened out? Well, Schwitz is a Jewish name, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, his grandfather uh, was Jewish. Uh, so, ethnically, he's at least partially Jewish. Oh, Judaism. Although, based on Jewish customs, he would not be Jewish because His Jewish is passed down through the mother. Through the mother. Hmm. Never heard of that. That's that way they always know who the mother is, but you don't always know who the father is. I don't get it. If Danica has a baby, people know that Danica's the mother. But So what? her ethnicity would pass to the child, but not necessarily the father's ethnicity based on the custom, that's their belief. I that's know. their belief. Okay. So, you know, like, most Western civilizations are paternal. So, you know, from the father. I invited him to earlier. He said he needed to test out Skype, which yeah. I invited him to do, and he has not yet done. <clears throat> so we shall see. I will send him a message to try to remind him about that.
part of um, uh, Mexico is uh, an Acapulco in. Acapulco. Right, I know, but like what, um, like is it? West Coast. East? Okay, West Coast. Okay, so it's pretty early. Still in the, the central time zone, actually. Oh, really? Do yeah. they not observe DST or is it just in the central? I guess in the central, but I don't know. I don't know if they do DST or not. Hmm, interesting. It's, you know, I guess you know, Mexico kind of curves downwards, so it's... Oh, you know, true, yeah. It's not, the, it's not the farthest west you can go in, in Mexico. It's just on the west side, mm. but it's not Pacific time. So it's only 646 there. The central time zone is huge, because most of Texas is in central. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like pretty much everything except for El Paso. Rats. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. You know, if only more politicians would have the level of conscience that uh, this man, Mr. Schwiech, has uh, in order to finally take himself out of the gene pool and make the world a better place, by putting a gun to his head and pulling the trigger. At least that's allegedly what has happened in uh, Missouri with this Republican gubernatorial candidate, Tom Schwiech. The story from stltoday.com. Uh, he has taken himself out after calling news media, calling the uh, St. Louis Dis Post Dispatch and the AP, inviting them to his home. Thursday afternoon, 2.30, he said he wanted to have a chat with just those two reporters and talk to them about some sort of religious issue more so than a political one, and then ultimately took his life seven minutes after, allegedly took his own life, his wife was home at the time apparently, uh, seven minutes after leaving a kind of distraught sounding message. I mean, you could definitely tell in his voice, we played the audio back a moment ago, you could definitely tell he sounded like he was having a difficult time. And then, again, seven minutes later, he pulls the trigger and he's gone. So I just found myself wondering, was he actually planning, was it Bud Dwyer was, was his name, Daryl? Bud Dwyer, the former uh, state treasurer of Pennsylvania, who had just been convicted of uh, some fraud and bribery corruption thing had also just gotten reelected as treasurer and two days after taking office called a press conference and started a prepared speech stopped the prepared speech in the middle and called up several reporters of various TV and newspapers and handed them envelopes that contained the full prepared speech. That's how mm -hmm. they know that he stopped in the middle uh, because they wound up, you know, like, here's the entire speech. And then he pulled a handgun out of a large manila envelope and said, if, if uh, you're easily offended, please leave the room, I believe is wow. what he said. <laughs> Put the gun in his own mouth, backed up against the wall, and pulled the trigger. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty shocking. I mean, if you've ever seen the video, of course, you know, media was there. So there's video of this happening. Uh, obviously, it was a surprise to everybody in there. And uh, and so I find myself wondering if that's what this guy was planning. You know, was was he planning to do another Bud Dwyer where he calls <laughs> the media up, brings them into the to his home and then puts a gun in his mouth and, and kills himself in front of them? Because, you know, maybe he just decided that he didn't want to go through with that. Maybe after he hung up the phone, he just kind of had second thoughts and decided, I don't want to do that. And well, just... he also got a voicemail instead of actually getting the, the reporter on the line. Do you That's think true. if he actually talked to a person, it may have stopped him from... I don't know. The, allegedly committing suicide. 
the reporter from the dispatch, uh, Tony Messenger, is quoted as saying, had I not ignored his phone call at 9.41 Thursday morning, I was doing a thing at my kid's school, Mm -hmm. I might have been the last person to talk to the man who wanted to be governor. In the end, he called me, perhaps because he didn't have anybody else. Nobody in his party wanted him to hold a news conference suggesting that there were anti-Semites in the Republican Party. He told me, I won't back down. I believed him. So, the, okay. Well, that's interesting. So, that was maybe what the possibility was for this. Right, because he said this is a religious issue, not yeah. a political issue. Well, it could have been that, uh, you know, <coughs> he was frustrated religiously and wanted to take himself out. I don't know. Right, but there, there had been the rumors circulating throughout the Republican Party that was started by the chair of the party saying, you know, Tom Sweich is possibly Jewish. Uh, his grandfather was Jewish, even though Schmidt himself went to an Episcopal church. Uh, and then Hancock, that's the guy who's the head of the party, said until recently, he told this to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, until recently I mistakenly believed that Tom Schmidt was Jewish, but it was simply a part of what I believed to be his biography. No different than the fact that he was from St. Louis and graduated from Harvard Law. While I do not recall doing so, it is possible that I mentioned Tom's faith in passing during one of my many conversations each day. There was absolutely nothing malicious about my intent, and I certainly was not attempting to inject religion into the governor's race. So there you go. Toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. I just thought it was an interesting story. You know, a politician kills themselves. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, the only one I can think of is the Bud Dwyer. There must be someone else who's done it, but you know the Bud there, Dwyer there, one. There's definitely more. I can't think of any yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah, neither can I. But Bud Dwyer is definitely the, I, I would say, the most famous or right. most infamous case because he did it in front of the media. The media. So you can share your thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855 453 Nobody knows at this point why this man did that, but it certainly sounded like he was pretty upset when he left that voicemail for the post-dispatch reporter. So draw your own conclusions. There's another suicide-related story here for you, you since we're on the topic. Uh, It's from nypost.com. This one's tragic. I mean, a politician offing themselves, well, you know, Gene Poole improves. But this one's really sad because this is a person who is actually a productive member of society. This is a person who is providing a product, providing services to people out there in the marketplace. And, you know, it may sound insensitive to say this, but when I saw these headlines, it made me think of something that you would probably see on TV. You know, you, everything is coming into a close. They're about ready to catch the guy, and then, bam. Oh, you're talking about the story I'm about to tell you exactly, about? Yeah, yeah. It so, sounds like some straight out, straight out of TV. The owner of Dell's Maraschino Cherries. This is a real story from nypost.com. Uh, the owner of one of the country's largest maraschino cherry companies fatally shot himself Tuesday as authorities raided his Brooklyn factory. Now, this guy, you know, he was about to get arrested and probably go to prison for a long time. And that could be one reason why he did this. A suspected massive drug front, say the so-called authorities, Dell's maraschino cherries owner, Arthur Mandela, age 57, stood by and nervously watched as authorities spotted suspicious shelving in a storage room in his Red Hook facility. They then opened up a door to the false wall behind it, and the smell of marijuana wafted out, say law enforcement sources. Mandela immediately, quote, asked to use the bathroom. He went in the bathroom and boom, a source said. Before shooting himself once in the head, Mandela told his sister, quote, take care of my kids. Investigators later found three large bags of pot stashed behind the fake wall at the landmark business which Mandela's grandfather started. He's suspected of using part of the factory as a grow house, sources say. Mandela has been trying to reinvigorate his cherry business at the site, which sells to big chain restaurants like Red Lobster, Buffalo Wild Wings, and TGI Friday. The company has recently become infamous with locals for turning sugar-addicted neighborhood bees red after they sipped on the syrupy sweet confection. Authorities wanted to get a warrant to search the place after being tipped off that it was a front for a marijuana business, but when they couldn't, They decided to try to do an end run through the Department of Environmental Protection, 
sources said. Well, this sounds really, really scummy. Investigators from the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office and the Department of Environmental Protection were technically searching the place for possible violations involving the dumping of waste when Mandela killed himself, said sources. So the DEA couldn't get a warrant. They had no evidence except for an, basically a tipster, somebody snitching on him. They then used the government regulator, the Department of Environmental Protection, who apparently, they don't need a warrant. You've you know, got a corporation approved by the government, and they can just come in there anytime they want and poke around. Uh, so they come in there and start looking around, and what do you know? They find a, a false wall, and behind that, a bunch of marijuana. Mandela started out cooperative and calm during the several, several hours long search until officials reached a room storing covered up vintage vehicles, including a Rolls Royce, Porsche, and Harley Davidson motorcycle. There they found the weird shelving and magnetically operated secret compartment behind it in the wall. Bah this does sound like a movie, doesn't it? It sounds like something that. Come to that cave! Right out of Breaking Bad. <laughs> Behind the secret compartment, investigators discovered an entrance to a dugout basement filled with three bags of marijuana. And I, you know, I don't know how many bags or how many pounds of marijuana were in these bags, but I would hope, you know, it's not like three small bags or something like that for all the effort that this guy went through. As soon as that door cracked, the aroma of marijuana was overwhelming, said the source. It looks like a cave, like they dug it out on their own. After Mandela shot himself with his 357 Magnum handgun in his personal bathroom and EMS was called around 1 p.m., authorities also recovered hundreds of thousands of dollars from the facility. Law enforcement source said this, and tell me if you believe this one, quote, Poor guy, in this day and age, you can do no jail time for marijuana. I don't know why he'd do that unless there's something worse down there. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number here. You can share your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, the Pledge of Allegiance and more on the story. Who was it that said you don't do jail time for law marijuana? enforcement source? I think there's something else. Down well, there. sounds like the jackass that testifies to the yeah. committees all the time. Nobody ever goes to jail for pot. Bullshit. So Wikipedia has a list of 100 politicians who have committed suicide. Jeez. Uh, looking on a couple of these, uh, it seems most of them have done it well after serving. Uh, so it's not during office then? Right. One of the articles, it actually said uh, this is notable as being one of the few politicians to actually kill uh, themselves uh, while in office. Yeah. That's crazy. Fifth governor of Florida, a man by the name of John Milton, <coughs> towards the end of the Civil War, left Tallahassee, went back to his plantation, 
uh, gave a message to the state legislature that said, Yankees have developed a character so odious that death would be preferable to reunion with them. Wow. And killed himself at his home. Gunshot to the head. Mmm. Did I read? I read this wrong, but I read it as Boris Yeltsin and as Boris Nemstov. It was a Russian opposition leader for Vla for Vladimir Putin. What about him? I'm sorry. Uh, he's a Vladimir Putin um, critic, but he was shot dead. I oh. read it as Boris Yeltsin, the ah. former leader. So that's why I was like, what? So, I apologize. Mark says he is not planning to call in. Oh. Mark, you break my heart. Are you telling him that? <laughs> no, I said, oh, is it that bad? Three <laughs> minutes. How much? Three. Oh. Yeah, it looks like there's a problem with the call on Sky. So, Daryl, my friend Mandy, um, former co host of the Aquarium Watch Show, is going to be up next week. Yeah, Mandy Parsons. Oh, sorry, sorry, not next week, the week after next week after yeah. Oliver is gone. I want to see if um, Ian's willing to take the night off and let you and me and her host the show. Or would you rather. I'm good. I'm good. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a giant mess of this. Mm. Uh, probably good. Fair, but seats all over now. Really? This brand? I haven't, really? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, but it's good. Would you like some more? 
So what if I do? Free Talk Live, you may dial toll-free here and bring up anything that you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up more about this raid on a maraschino cherry manufacturer in New York. This story from NYPost.com where the boss, the owner, Arthur Mandela, age 57, stood by and nervously watched as government goons were spending hours searching his uh, facility, ostensibly on the claim that uh, he might be dumping waste, but the real reason was because the DEA had been given a tip suggesting that there was actually a marijuana grow operation, and the man who owned the factory ended up killing himself. We'll continue with what happened in that story. By the way, with you in the studio tonight, it's me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Let's go all the way over to Cameroon, Africa, where Akko is on the line. Akko, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Hi, Akko. Good to have you back here. I appreciate uh, you know the effort that you put into calling Free Talk Live. It's fairly unusual because you actually have to travel 40 kilometers and then buy internet access and borrow a laptop from a friend in order to even be able to talk to us. So thank you for that, and go ahead with what you wanted to share. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so do I, and I'm frustrated by it, but honestly, you know, the, the situation is partially of my doing, uh, because the, what had happened, for listeners who don't know, Free Talk Live is on the Liberty Radio Network, it's an internet-based network, which features a variety of different shows. Daryl, you've got a few different shows, a couple different ones that are yes. on there. Um, there's dozens of liberty-oriented podcasts and live shows, and it's available 24-7 online, of course, at lrn.fm, but not everyone in the world, in fact, the majority of the world does not have internet access. Uh, the There's a, a 4 billion people in the world that don't have access to the internet. But satellite does go where those people live. And the thing is, with satellite, with the, what is called free-to-air satellite, uh, it's free to receive, meaning that you can purchase a receiver uh, and a dish at very low cost. I mean, it's not a low cost for people in in Cameroon, but still, it's not like you have to pay a monthly fee. That's the idea behind free-to-air, is it's a free channel that the end user, as long as you've got the equipment to receive it, you can decode it for free and listen or watch. There's television stations like RT or Al Jazeera or Press TV uh, that are also available on these free-to-air satellites. And so it's free to the listener, but it's not free to the broadcaster. I still have to pay for the airtime, and it costs thousands of dollars per year to be on in the United States and in Canada and Mexico. And so we've got North America and Central America, and we've been on since 2010, actually, um, doing satellite broadcasting on LRN.FM. And then in 2012, the company that puts our signal on the satellite over North and Central America contacted me and said, hey, we've got a new satellite, because they're always trying to, you know, pitch me on other satellites and get more money out of me, right? Sure. So they've got, uh, which I don't have a whole lot of money to spend on this kind of thing, but it's something that I think is important. It's something I wanted to do in the United States, and eventually I did want to expand out to the rest of the world. So the uh, the guy, you know, my salesman from the satellite company calls me up and says, hey, we've got this satellite, Amos 5, over Africa, and we'd like to give you a channel on there for two months as a test, you know, just to kind of, you know, test the waters, give you a little freebie, you know, 
first one's free, that kind of thing. And so they put us up, and that was great. And I'm not going to say no, right? Sure, yeah, put us up there. I'd love to have people listening. And I always kind of dreamed about, you know, the idea of people like Akko hearing the ideas of freedom and, you know, taking them in and really considering them. I thought that was a cool concept. And sure enough, uh, Akko found us. It wasn't within that two-month time frame because what happened was, this was 2012, what happened was they kept us on. And they never said anything about it. Like, I kept checking. There's a website called Lingsat, L-Y-N-G-S-A-T, where people all around the world listen to these free-to-air satellite, or they watch these free-to-air satellite uh, stations, and they sort of catalog them all. And so there's, like, a big channel listing there. And I kept going back to that. I kept seeing that Liberty Radio Network was there, and, like, the date would keep being updated where someone was actually checking it within the last few months. And so I'm not going to call the satellite company and say, Hey, you kept us on! How much should I, could I pay you for this? You know, because I don't have a whole bunch of money to spend on this. So if they're going to give me satellite coverage over Africa for free, and it's a fairly large swath of sort of east, west, central Africa, uh, basically from one coast to the other, that uh, receives this signal, if they're going to put me on there for free, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. So I kept my mouth shut for two years and three, almost three years. It's now, 20, wow. it's now 2015, and I think they started us in April of 2012. So... You know, it was a nice free ride. It really was. Yeah, and so now, you know, they finally pulled us off the air, and Akko contacts me on Facebook or Skype or whatever, and he says, hey, you know, you're off the air. And I said, well, oh, well, can you check with somebody else and double check, you know, make sure, and you did, and, you know, dip, we're definitely off. So uh, the first thing I did was I called the tech department at the satellite providers. I didn't want to call my sales guy because if I could talk to the tech guy and be like, hey, is a, is a bunch of channels off or is it just my channel? And he said, no, there was an order to pull your channel uh, on the 18th of uh, February. So then I called the sales guy and I said, hey, I want to thank you for uh, giving us the bonus. And he actually, <laughs> he claims he totally forgot to pull the channel. But I said, I thought it might be that uh, the fact this was a new satellite if you've got this new satellite up there, there's already other satellites with other channels on them. So the challenge is to get channels to come on the satellite. Right. So, you know, you want to sell channels to people, but who's going to buy a satellite with no channels on it? Right. So it's not really worth anything unless there's other channels there. So I said this to the sales guy. I said, hey, you know, I thought it was either you forgot about it or that you kept us there. That way the, the satellite was populated with some channels. That way you could actually sell some channels on the satellite. And he did sort of admit that, you know, that might be possible, but he <laughs> claimed that he had forgotten about it. So anyway, it's not doing you any good, Akko, because you've had no LRN.FM for now... Uh, two weeks or going on two weeks and it's not something where unfortunately I can just you know flip a switch and make it come back on um, I'm probably going to have to do some fundraising for this and it's interesting that it happened to happen now because I've been putting off basically and sort of slowly tweaking this satellite fundraiser for uh, getting on a different satellite and I'm going to change that now and, and make it to get on to get back on uh, in Africa but uh, I did make an offer to the company, a lowball offer to where I was like, look, if you take this offer, I'll come on today. You know, I'll buy a year's worth in advance right now. And they said no to that offer. You know, they want to get more than that. And so what I've been doing over the last week or so is contacting different satellite providers and getting, trying to get some numbers and some quotes. Because it always helps to get quotes from different providers. Right. Are you trying to pay with Bitcoin to any of these? If I actually find one that has a good price uh, for this, then I will offer that uh, and see if they'll bite on that. But, you know, so basically we're going to have to raise some money to do it. So, uh, Akko, it's not going to happen tomorrow. Right. No, I agree, and I will certainly keep you, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're my man on the ground there in Cameroon, and uh, I will definitely keep you in the loop as to uh, what the developments are. It's something that I, I want to do. I know you've said that you hope that I can keep this particular satellite, and I agree, you know, it's convenient the way these things work. You generally fix your satellite at one, uh, or your dish, rather, at one satellite, and moving the satellite, moving the dish is difficult. Right.
That's good. See, I didn't know that when I look at the when I've looked at the list, it looks like just a bunch of religious channels for the most part. So it's good to know that that's that's happening there. Hey, uh, Akko, thanks for the call. We'll definitely keep in touch. And uh, sorry for the inconvenience, but that's really all I can do. I mean, I was basically running on a free ride for uh, three years, and can you blame me? Eight fifty five, four fifty free. More coming up. Uh, I have a funny story about the free ride kind of stuff. I don't. I don't know if I should discuss it on air. Sure. What's it about? Oh. <laughs> So, you don't have to tell the whole story, but it's like... Oh, no, and, it, and it, you know, it's not like a bad story. I think it's just <clears throat> a long time ago in one of my first apartments, my roommate and I signed up for, like, this really good cable TV slash internet deal from, you know, the from our cable company because it was just, like, ridiculously awesome. So it was only there for, like, I want to say three or four months. Like, some really weird... It was going to increase. So we're not always like... Oh yeah, well you know we'll cancel the cable the cable TV part because neither one of us really wanted cable TV. We just liked it in the background, mm -hmm. but we definitely wanted the internet. So you know three so months. You canceled passed. it and they didn't turn it off. Well, okay, so so we got the bill and it was like really huge because we. This is good to talk about. You don't have to tell the whole story. I oh, just, okay. No, no. we won't have to tell it twice. What popped into my head was uh, the office space. Where the one guy got fired, but somehow still managed. He to was still stay. getting the paychecks. Hmm. No, 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 no. He was fired, but and he, but he wasn't getting paychecks. No, no. It started that he was getting paychecks, and then the bobs fixed the glitch. That's right. To That's where right. he wasn't getting the paychecks anymore. That's right. But nobody ever told him nobody he was did. fired. Yeah. And he was like, it, it's been it's been six months since I get the paycheck and. Uh, God. Payroll told me to talk to you, but you keep telling me to talk to payroll. And That's the guy that burned the place down. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they keep moving my desk, and oh, some bird just stole my stapler. And <laughs> I'm gonna burn Silicon Valley's off. coming back in a few weeks, too, I think. I didn't know the Valley went away. The show by Mike Judge. Didn't know there was a show by Mike Judge called good. Silicon Valley. It's his current show, it's an HBO series. It's a half hour comedy series. Okay. Have you, been, have you been watching Better Call Saul? Um, I actually stopped watching it because Renee said she wanted to watch it, but she's put no effort into it. So oh. I don't know for how long I will stop. Yeah. Well, how many have you two. seen? Two. We've got three and four downloaded next well, week. them. Okay. I just haven't watched them. Did you ever watch the. <coughs> if you like The Office, you like Silicon Valley. Uh. The Office is kind of retarded. Oh, not The Office. Office Space, space is, is what I meant. I'm sorry. I meant Office uh, Space. Mike Judge. If you like Mike Judge, you like okay. Silicon Valley. Um, did you ever watch Morgan Spurlock's Bitcoin thing? Mm, I haven't gotten around to I heard it was that. terrible. I thought it was. I have no interest in watching that. I know some people thought it was good, but hmm. to me it just seemed kind of like a... Well, it's very much like, yeah, oh, dude. this thing is like, you know, decentralized, no government. Why would you trust something like that? And it's like, really, dude? Well, that wasn't him that said like, that. Like, that was a newscaster mm -hmm. talking about it, and he had that in, like, the intro thing oh, leading see. into it. It's Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free to bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. 
and enjoy the features we share with you. Uh, they're all free. You can actually create the content there on the front page of the website. So whatever it is you want to share with our listeners, and uh, they can vote on them. You just submit it. Uh, it's, uh, you submit a news article or a blog post or a YouTube video, whatever you think is interesting, outrageous, fun, exciting, whatever you think our listeners will appreciate. You submit it to freetalklive.com via our Reddit-based system. And then at that point, it appears on basically the front page of the website. You can then vote it up. Or vote up others' submissions, and others can vote on yours. Vote it up or down, whether you like or dislike. It's all free over at freetalklive.com. Also free, a pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee, and it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees. Your first pound's free. You just pay the shipping cost over at coffee.freetalklive.com. And when you buy your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, and it's easy. Once you get your first pound, you're on the auto ship program, and you can actually adjust your shipments, adjust how often you get them, what the size is, and, of course, the flavor. And more flavors, by the way, open up once you get your first pound. So coffee.freetalklive.com. But a portion of the profits from each pound go towards microloans with kiva.org. And that's one of the things that Mark is doing. He's administering those loans, deciding to whom to loan the money and, you know, when and all that. So we've given out multiple loans already. And you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com. So you get great coffee at a great price. And uh, the first pound's free, shipped right to you. You just pay the shipping cost at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can feel good because a portion of the profits are helping people make a better life for themselves around the world. Now, we were just talking with Akko in uh, Cameroon, who is bummed out because right now he, the only way he could possibly listen to Free Talk Live is if he has internet access, which in his hometown of Ndop, uh, he does not have internet access. And um, that is in a, you know, there's a, there are a lot of parts of the world that are like this, where you know, they may have electricity sometimes, uh, but they don't have internet. And so they could perhaps watch some television through their satellite dish or listen to LRN.FM through their satellite dish, but not if it's not on the air. And unfortunately, it's not on the air over Africa anymore, our LRN.FM channel, because, well, fact is, I wasn't paying for it. And, uh, you know, I was sort of taking the free ride. The satellite company said they were going to give me two months. They ended up giving me almost three years for free on this satellite, which I'm grateful for. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I didn't have to pay whatever the total cost would have been. But now I enter into negotiations to where, well, they know I've, they know I've got an audience now. They know that, you know, we want to be on that satellite. And so they're wanting to charge me as much, basically, actually, they wanted 50% more than what I'm currently paying for North America and Central America. Oh, wow. And uh, that's just, I'm, I'm not going to pay 50% more than what I'm paying for North and Central America, so especially considering the, there aren't many English speakers necessarily. Well, what's the difference in total possible population reach? There's probably a larger reach over Africa would be my guess, but, you know, how many of them speak English is another question. Most in they have some understanding all African sure. countries. Now, in the West Cameroon, there's a lot of English speakers. But are you saying most people in Africa speak English? I don't know if that's true. Uh, that has been my sort of um, my understanding based on people that I have known that have moved from Africa. Okay. Uh, English is basically the trade language. Hmm. So any sort of global business or multinational business, well, they're transacting for the most part in English. Well, typically in that area, and Akko uh, said this the other week where he was saying that the main language is French because it was a French colony at one point. So usually That's it correct. goes French, then the whatever, a native African tongue, then English. But I mean, English is spoken fairly commonly from what it sounds like. And now, if theoretically you, you were able to purchase the satellite, how, let's see, how, what's the area that it would cover besides Cameron? Like what are uh, Basically a large swath of central east, west Africa from one coast to the other. So a fairly large area, not the entire continent. Sure, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, a decent chunk of it. Um, and if you want to see the, the signal pattern, you can go to sat.lrn.fm because I actually haven't updated the satellite page to remove it yet. And you can see the, uh, the signal map and what it looks like there. But what I'll do is I'll put together a fundraiser for this. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll shoot for the, the amount that they're demanding from me. And if I can raise that amount, then I'll go ahead and, and pay it and we'll, we'll get back on. I don't know what's realistic. I've never done one of these, uh, you know, Indiegogo campaigns. That's the way we're going to have to do this. 
because I don't have the money in the like Free Talk Live amp or something like that to just go and, and put this this on. Hooray, crowdsourcing. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes, and it's going to take me a little bit of time because I've got to work up a hey, video. And, sure, you know, I've yeah. done a well-written yeah. pitch yeah. goes a long way. Right. Uh, decent video helps, and then uh, I realize you don't necessarily have things to give away, but perks generally help as well. Right. Yeah, the last thing I want to do is spend people's money on product fulfillment and then have to raise even more money that way. So we'll try to figure out some perks that won't necessarily cost a whole lot of money to uh, to make happen. And like I said, I was already putting this together for a different satellite fundraiser. And so it's fortunate that, I guess it's fortunate that, you know, the, the plug got pulled before I started this other fundraiser. And because it's more important to me to get back on in Africa before raising money for anything else. Something that I have mentioned to you Previously, I realized that you will give a bumper sticker to anybody that sends a self-addressed stamped envelope to yeah. you. But if you have one of the perks, be you know, for X amount of dollars, I will send you a bumper sticker. That's something. People like getting something when they donate to a fundraiser. Yeah. Now, I understand all that. It's just the fulfillment is the issue, right? Because usually you have to pay someone to do that. If if you're raising thousands of dollars and you're giving someone a bumper sticker for donating 10 bucks or something like that, and then you have hundreds of people donate $10, somebody's got to put those bumper stickers in envelopes. And that's a time-consuming activity that you then have to likely pay someone for. Because I can tell you, I don't have time to sit down and address 600 or 1,000 envelopes or whatever and then, you know, send those out. So then you'd have to factor in someone actually, you know, receiving a paycheck to be the product fulfillment person for this. And there's, there's just a lot that has to be done. Now, you know, we could also make it to where someone could, uh, you know, give a donation and then require them to send their own self-addressed stamped envelope. Hey, if you really want this sticker, then just send it to us. Of course, that's no different than what you could normally do. But the average person donating to the fundraiser may not be aware of that. Right. And I've seen different fundraisers before to where they will tell you, you know, like, this perk costs this much. Yeah. And... Add in $25 for shipping. Add a couple of different tiers. So, mm -hmm. Wait a second. Why not just make this $25 more and then I don't have to send you extra money to ship the perk that I want? Yeah. Um, so something else uh, on this would be that these uh, fulfillment things, again, they're very, very expensive. And so coming up with creative stuff, like I like the idea of having different LRN hosts volunteer to, say, allow fan you know, for a large donation right. to come and sit in the studio while they're, you know, doing their show. So, like, you know, if somebody really likes Ernie Hancock from Declare Your Independence, they, uh, you know, if Ernie was willing to do this, obviously I'd have to talk to the hosts and get hosts willing to do something like that. That way, you know, stuff that the person would then have to cover their own airfare, they'd have to cover their own hotel, and they'd have to, you know, take the their own steps to make it happen. Donor party at Port Fest. That's, a, that's one that we've talked about as well. So this is going to happen. It's just, unfortunately, I can't get the satellite channel back on tomorrow uh, as much as I would like to. We're coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. Get to your story, Danica, but just kept going on that one. Send myself a message to remind myself about a piece of show prep for Sunday. Sorry, what? Hmm. There was a piece of show prep that it just popped into my mind a couple of minutes ago. They don't want to talk about, but since I'm going to be on Sunday, I think it would be better for Sunday, mm -hmm. since we're on more stations. Okay. Are we on in North Carolina on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Asheville. Okay. okay, good. WNC. Clear the, channel. This uh, story comes out of North Carolina, so definitely get some local interest, possibly. Cool. What's your name? You guys may have heard the thing. Lobbyists, 
in North Carolina can have sex with politicians. Didn't hear about that. <laughs> and it because sex, quote unquote, does not have a monetary value, it is not required to be reported on the ethics forms. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah, so some of the stories that I saw about it, it was like, uh, state rules that lobbyists and politicians can legally have sex. And so I actually found the Ethics Commission report. And <coughs> they have a footnote saying, you know, like, we are not discussing the legality of two unmarried adults having consensual sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is only about the ethics reporting. Mm. It said because it has no cash value, uh, it's not required to be reported on ethics forms. And then there's also something called like goodwill lobbying, mm -hmm. where you you know like be all buddy buddy with somebody and find out about them. Sex is also not considered part of goodwill lobbying <laughs> to establish personal relationships. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm moving to North Carolina. <laughs> Are you gonna be part of the what the blue something Liberty Project? <laughs> no. What's it called? Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge Liberty. <laughs> I'm just going to go search for cute female lobbyists. <laughs> One thing I've noticed, at least in New Hampshire, the cute female lobbyists are all fucking lefties. Are they? No. Women are more likely to be lefties. That's true. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free to bring up what you'd like, 855-450-FREE, and uh, whether or not you are in the United States or outside, you can always call us on Skype, and that'll make you sound great pretty much anywhere in the world, even in a place like Cameroon, where your internet access is relatively difficult uh, to attain, and when you do attain it, it is not particularly great as far as its speed. I did a test once with Akko, and uh, he was getting like 600 kilobits per second down which is not very fast compared to, you know, what we're used to over here. But at least he's uh, gotten it and he's gotten in touch with us. You can call us anywhere in the world by using Skype at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request first. It will be approved after that. Easy to call us from that point forward. TexasBitcoinConference.com. That's the place to be in about four weeks, March 28th and 29th, downtown Austin, Texas at the Moody Theater. Mark and myself will be there. We were there uh, last year. We were broadcasting live. We will be broadcasting yet again this year from the Texas Bitcoin Conference, which features all kinds of great speakers, including uh, the economist, world-famous investor, and author George Gilder, as well as Simbala Nair. He's uh, flying in from India, and he's the uh, chief architect of their blockchain technology. Uh, then David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, Charlie Shrem, and other speakers. Go and get the full listing over at TexasBitcoinConference.com. And don't miss the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. Uh, the first one was really successful and some cool ideas came out of the first hackathon. So it'll be exciting to see what comes out of this year's. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com and get your tickets. Use code FTL when you do so and you'll save 25 bucks off the already affordable $150 admission price plus you uh, will be, uh, of your admission fee, another $25 will go to Sean's Outpost, which is a great Bitcoin-based charity helping homeless folks in Florida. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com, get signed up. We'll look forward to seeing you there. It's March 28th and 29th, downtown Austin, Texas, at the Moody Theater, TexasBitcoinConference.com. Don't forget, code FTL.
Did you confirm whether or not Charlie Shrem is actually going to be there? I have not confirmed that. No, I'm sorry about that. I mean, that's what they're telling us. I, I know that's I what they're saying. saying prison, but and based on the day that he was convicted and the day that he's supposed to turn himself in, yeah, you know, those dates aren't adding up. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you can ask Mark to needle them about this or whatever, but uh, I don't know why he hasn't gotten that, that information. Did he tell you he would? No, I have not spoken to Mark about it. I've okay. spoken to you about it. Ah, okay. Well, talk to Mark about it. So, TexasBitcoinConference.com. They say Charlie Shrem will be there. I don't know. Maybe they'll have him on the jail phone. I mean, that would count, right? Technically, he's, yes. He's speaking at the conference. <laughs> I don't know what that means. In what form he will be speaking. Oh, maybe uh, they'll have that little robot thing like they use for Edward Snowden. Seems so that he, he can, you know, like walk around the stage and all you see is like the computer head and the computer moves. Is that kind of the same in South Park where they have an iPad well, on the robot that moves around? Yeah, oh. that's exactly what it is. That, that is a thing. Okay. Roger Veer was doing that to pass out Bitcoin in New York City. Because he can't come to the United wherever States. Wherever he was yeah. on, you know, like some sort of uh, relay connection. Liberty Phoenix is in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live. Liberty Phoenix. Hey there. Oh, cool. Yep. Cool. Excellent. Well, I, pr I appreciate that. And I imagine there will be a lot of people who are going to get behind this because Akko is, you know, he's an interesting character. I mean, you don't get to talk to people like that very often. And uh, it's it's fascinating to hear his uh, his difficulties that he's uh, he's had just trying to get a passport and the, the bribes that he's had to pay. And he's really inspiring, too, because he's got a small community that looks up to him. So when Ellerin is not on the air, they ask him, Akko, what's going on? Yeah, where's, on? The, where's the radio station? Where, what's going on here? So, well, thanks for that. It's very generous, uh, Phoenix. Uh, probably at least $20,000 would be my guess. So, you know. Yeah. Thanks for that. Anything else you want to share tonight? Oh, you're going to be driving to New Hampshire. I believe you're staying here for a portion of the year and kind of getting your feet wet. That's exciting. By police. Very exciting. Here's, here's what you could do, and there are various different Free State Project Facebook groups uh, out there. I think one of them is like Free, Free State Project Welcome Wagon or Housing. Um, I don't have the links handy, but they're out there. And then uh, there's also the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. Send post me a message, uh, Liberty Phoenix, send me a message. I might know somebody that can put you up. There you go. Phoenix, thanks for the call tonight. Good luck and drive safe. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Now, I want to make it clear, um, he just happened to call about that. This isn't like some kind of pledge drive show, and it's not going to become that <laughs> at any point. It's not going to be like, you know, public radio. When I finally start this pledge thing, it's not like we're going to be sitting here bringing, well, let's bring in Jerry... Springer or whoever, and they'll Jerry. entertain you for a half hour while we take more of your pledging calls. No, we don't do that. This is, you know, not that kind of show. It's not public radio, um, but it will be something that uh, that will happen at some point, and hopefully sooner rather than later. I just got to get my S together, uh, so to speak. So 
Toll-free number tonight, 855-453. Danica, you had said off the air that you have a freebie story because you're inspired by my story of getting satellite access for free over Africa for nearly three years because they basically forgot about me. Uh, what was your story? Yeah, this is kind of a silly story that r reminded me of something that happened in college. Uh, a friend of my roommate and I decided to go with this really awesome internet and cable TV deal and the... I want to say it was like $50 for the two of them combined, and then afterwards it was going to increase. So an introductory offer. Introductory offer. And so we're like, okay, well, we'll enjoy it. Neither one of us really watched cable TV uh, because we both just love the internet. Okay. And we were just going to take it for the trial and then cancel what happened. Well, so the internet and the TV together would have been cheaper than the internet by itself? Right, yeah. one of those things? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we had the deal for a little bit, and then after three months, we both just kind of forgot that it was going to increase. So the fourth bill comes in, and... It's, you know, pr it's pretty massive. And I don't remember what exactly the exact thought was, but I remember it was like, ah, no, let's just let's cancel. Like 150 so bucks or something, something like that. Yeah, something really. Cable's outrageous. not cheap. I mean, if you're getting all the packages and the HBOs and the Showtimes, yeah. it's expensive. Yeah, and it was expensive. Back, this was like five years ago, and it's right. definitely increased since then. So you know, I called the cable company, had them stop it, um, canceled it out. And our cable never got shut off. Mm -hmm. So for the next, you know, three, four years that we were in that apartment, we had free cable TV and never paid wow. for it. Now, was this back when cable, it was the cable in that area digital cable or was it still the old analog system? I want to say it was just after the analog because I remember commercials being on about, oh, call and claim your free digital receiver box. Huh. So it was just after all that propaganda. That's interesting. So you, how long did you get it free for? Oh, for the rest of the time you were there? For the rest of the time we were there, I think we Sweet. lived in that apartment for like the next two, three years before yeah. we finally went our separate ways. I mean, it's not stealing, right? It's, it's they're not. Just, they're just clueless. Yeah, their incompetence is your benefit, and uh, I don't think like, there's anything wrong with that at all. If they turn it off one day, well, whatever. We're not paying for it anyway, yeah. but I mean, we would have really dumb TV shows just play on. I remember waking up and hearing VH1 in the morning. And it was just Personally, I wouldn't want it. I mean, I don't yeah. I don't like cable television. I haven't had it ever uh, since I've been out of my parents' house. And I, know, I, I feel like I'm better off for it. Uh, the times where I have gone, like I went back to Florida so once. so much stuff is on the internet. Like yeah. everything's getting from the internet. I remember sitting in front of the, the uh, TV at my friend's, my ex-girlfriend's house in Florida and like trying the DVR out for the very first time in 2012. I'd never tried one before that. More coming up here. It's Free Talk Live, 855, 450 free. I've never used a DVR. Yeah, it was neat. You can pause live television. I had no idea that you were actually, that I, I also didn't know that you could actually pause live TV. Like, I thought yeah. you had to record it, mm -mm. and then you could fast forward it. Pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like, if you're into TV, it's a cool device. And, of course, if you hit pause, then you can, like, jump ahead in the commercials, too. If yeah. you go away and do something. Yeah. You can come back. and. I, I could see that being beneficial watching a sporting event. Which yeah. is pretty much all I would ever watch yeah. on cable. And you can rewind it too, I think, mm -hmm. too, like to play back. Yeah. Like to see, oh, that play was BS. Which is what exactly what Daryl would say. I would not say BS. <laughs> I would say the full word. <laughs> oh, you should hear me at trivia. Oh, God. If I, like, if there's. <laughs> There's a question where it's like, I know this, I just can't think of it. Like, you know, I'll just, like, put something down, and then when they read the answer, I'm like, fucking cuckle! <laughs> but yeah, I want to see if I'm either Ian wants to take the night off, and you, me, and Mandy can host it, or Mandy will just, like, stir around. Because I don't know what Ian's criteria is for letting, like, guest hosts or anything like that. But, I mean, she was formerly on the Corey Moore show. And, you know, she's done radio for a long time, so right, she's very right. comfortable. So I don't know, like, how I should pitch it to Ian. I, I would not really set the Corey Moore show as really no, a high bar. No, of course not. Of course for... not. But, you know, I'm just saying she has, like, lots of experience. Right, right. Here, so. I'm impressed by your anime posters, Ian. I knew you liked anime, but I didn't know that you liked a whole lot. Oh, those are video games, but... Some uh, of them are video games. It looks like a few of them were anime, at least. 
taste. Or it's going to add an art, art to it. Wait, the ones in the broom over there? Yeah. Don't you have like a Slayers? No. Um, no. Lunar 1, 2, those are video games. Right. And the only other, only other one that you could categorize as anime would be Transformers the movie. Technically it was the animated more by Japanese people. Than anime, but yeah. Well, I mean, it technically is anime. I mean, if it was made in Japan, then isn't it anime or whatever? If it's Japanese animation? Right. But that one, but that one I think, didn't it start in America? Because I don't think it's... I could be I could be wrong about the origins of it. I mean, I don't know the definition of anime. I mean, I, if it has to be written in Japan, then it was probably... I think it's, it's just a particular... Anime. It's a particular style of animation. <clears throat> Johnson and I will argue about this for, like, hours hmm. on end. And you know, neither one of us agree with it. But, I mean... I'm not an anime fan. I've seen some of it over time, and I liked some of it. Um, so you've probably seen Ghost in the Shell, right? I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, I liked it. Confusing as shit, but, you know, pretty. Mm -hmm. um, you've probably seen Akira then, too, yes. right? Yeah, Akira's very good. My dad actually used to have the, the actual comic books or whatever. Oh, nice. Akira. Oh, man, someone just posted like, the most saddest picture I've ever seen. There was a series that I saw once that I really liked. I just don't remember what it was called. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we should do the Pledge of Allegiance thing here. Sure. I think we're done talking about freebie <clears throat> stories. And suicide stories. Technically, another freebie is SoundCloud. Oh, yeah. That's right. They told me they were going to give me my first year free, and they kept giving me more freebies, so I'm not saying anything. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here to bring up whatever you'd like. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. we got to continue the story here, and then uh, we'll continue the story about the cherry factory being raided, uh, looking for marijuana. They found it. And when they found it, the man who owned the factory shot himself to death. And you said this was in New York? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't try to arrest his dead body for possessing a firearm. Brooklyn, actually, is where this was. Yeah, um, so it's New York City. Yeah, he had a 357, uh, and he took himself out as the government goon squad that had been prowling through his offices for hours, several hours long search, Ultimately, finding a secret door, they found uh, some s suspicious looking shelving uh, and then a magnetically operated secret compartment behind it in the wall. Behind that secret compartment, according to NYPost.com, investigators discovered an entrance to a dugout basement filled with three bags of marijuana. They said that as soon as the door was cracked, the aroma was overwhelming. It was a cave, like they dug it out on their own. And then some ridiculous law enforcement source says this. This is where we left off in the story. Quote, poor guy, in this day and age, you can do no jail time for marijuana. Yeah, if you've got, like, you know, a gram. Yeah, this guy presumably had several pounds in his bags. How big were these bags? It's not made clear. You know, if it's Big a enough to quote unquote overwhelming yeah. smell, or you know, like I'm imagining fifty-five gallon bag, yeah. you know, like the ones that you put leaves in when you rake your yard. That's believable to me because you're not going to have a secret wall, uh, a secret magnetic door for tiny little for baggies. Small right. little bags. Yeah. Um, it's got to be a sizable amount. Yeah. But exactly. I mean, doing no jail time for marijuana. I mean, come on. Yeah, really? I understand that, that cannabis has been decriminalized in New York State. I, I get that. Small amount. Right. Not hundreds of pounds or dozens of pounds. You're going to go to prison. a pound. Right. Even if this guy is completely, uh, has no record, he's probably going to go to prison for being caught with this much cannabis. And he knows it. And he knows he's 57. And there's no chance, likely, that he's going to see the light of day ever again. So he just took his life right there. It's truly a tragic story. And, you know, th this is a lie that is repeated often by police to politicians. Mm -hmm. Here in New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, we, we've heard it numerous times in New Hampshire whenever there's a bill to either decriminalize or full out what I call true legalization. 
uh, Mark Morton, who put forth a bill a couple of years ago, had a bill that would have struck in I like everything that. from the statute. Like, you were, you know, marijuana was no longer going to be in the statute. Yeah, you weren't here when uh, Cantwell and Rich and I had a discussion about that. I really like what, uh, what Rich had come up with, calling that repeal. The best, most descriptive term for that is repeal of prohibition on cannabis, because that describes striking the statutes. Legalization usually has the connotation of creating a regulatory structure around it. Decriminalization, you could argue, you can't ever go all the way with decriminalization, but true repeal uh, would be the best way to describe that. So that's how I've started to... Right, and I, I've yes. described it uh, as I think everything should be as legal as tomatoes. Right. And no, in New Hampshire... The word tomato does not appear anywhere in statute. So, um, a little bit so, more here. Go, go ahead. Uh, let, let me finish what I was saying yeah. about the state police guy. He's told numerous committees on every, you know, every kind of uh, bill that there is about cannabis, people aren't in jail for cannabis. And he actually said for simple possession. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously he'll admit that somebody's in there for selling. Correct. Or manufacturing. But nobody's in just for possession. But what he fails to mention, other than the fact that people do wind up going to jail for mere possession, is that people are in for violation of probation. That's true. That they got the probation for possessing. They violated probation by possessing. So, yes, on paper, they're in for a violation of probation, but they're in there for possession of cannabis. It's true, and, but a lot of times they'll, uh, they'll sort of they'll categorize it uh, by saying that, well, no one goes to jail for first-time possession. And that generally is a true statement, Although I would count being booked in a facility where you are held against your will <laughs> as being in jail. I mean, even though it's not right. officially jail, if you put me in handcuffs and take me down to the but police But even station, that's not true because there was the lawyer that got up to testify the last committee we went to that said some of my clients are in for true. 30 days for their first time offense. That's right. Yeah, he cited one judge in particular that was doing that. Yeah, so, that, that's where that quote just doesn't make any sense. It's like, no, there's still plenty of jail time for marijuana. It's mostly a true statement, although you can poke holes in it, and it sounds good when it comes from his mouth because he's a cop, and oh, who, who disbelieves right. the police? And he's one of these guys that he wants you to think, well, you know, we're using our discretion. We're not really enforcing this. But we can't remove the statute. Like, we can't codify that we have to use this kind of discretion. Let's go to the phones here. Tyke Meissen is on the line listening in California. Tyke Meissen, go ahead. Uh, are you also late. going to chew my ear? You can't give him the jokes, Daryl. I mean, it's just a bad crank from PC, it, it's California. It's so bad that I felt like I had to have to say the joke. It's so bad, yeah. it's probably as bad as your jokes, Daryl. I don't think you can be sued for copyright violation for using someone's name on the radio. Huh? What is idolatry about cannabis? Why? How? Oh, is that is that <laughs> really right? How wait amazing. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now you claim to be a Christian, Pete, in California, don't you? Okay, I thought you've used the term Christian before. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and take that back. Well, doesn't then, so. Christian actually mean like a follower of Christ? So therefore, if you believe in Christ, you are a Christian.
What do you call yourself? A follower of Jesus? Is there a better name than that? A soldier. So, as somebody who... Okay, so do you believe that God created the earth? Where does it... What if you eat the marijuana? <laughs> What if you want to eat the marijuana, not if you're sick, but just because you want to eat the marijuana, because you want to get high? What if, what if then? What if I want to include it in my curry? <laughs> Why is it idolatry? What does that have to do with idols? But it's God's plant. God, God put God it on the earth. It. Is it, hold on, Pete, is it idolatry? Pete, I've got more questions for you. Is it idolatry when the deer in the woods approaches a marijuana plant that has buds on it and the deer eats the marijuana buds? Is that idolatry? Yes. Yes, it does. Not every animal is interested in getting high, but sometimes some of them are. And there's a lot of evidence out there that animals want to get high. There's plenty of video online. Oh, the, uh, the dolphins with the puffer fish. Yeah, that's a good one. Where the uh, the young dolphins in this video, I think it was called Eye in the Pod or Spy in the Pod. Spy in the Pod. Uh, by the, I don't know if it was BBC. BBC. But, yeah. Um, and they uh, they actually filmed, thanks by the way, Pete, for the call tonight. Uh, they actually recorded dolphins with these really neat kind of uh, undercover cameras. They were disguised as turtles and other little dolphins and things like that. It was a eel or something. Anyway, they uh, had these uh, cameras where it wasn't obvious they were cameras to the dolphins, so they've got to record them doing things they've never seen them do before. And one of them was these dolphins passing around a puffer fish and getting high off of the poison that the puffer fish oh, wow. would put off to defend itself. Uh, it was like they were passing a joint around. Off, off, yeah, and eight, fast. Right, 855, 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. It's kind of like the horse getting drunk off of um, apple cider, too. Sure. Um, Let me see. Is there a video of that? Oh, yeah. There's video of, like, horses getting drunk. Nice. Elephants in South Africa will eat the um, fermented marula berries and get drunk. Mm hmm well, I've heard of that, too. Yeah, God, peace. And so amarula good. is a very good rum. It's very smooth. It's very creamy. How would you want to bet my way from PAX more than I do? <laughs> PAX? Oh, for the trip? Yeah. For a day trip. Like, literally, we're not... <laughs> like, we're not even going to be gone like 24 hours. <coughs> Did you meet uh, Liberty Phoenix at Porkfest last yeah. year? Yeah. Yeah, I'd totally vouch for him as a short-term, like, you know, week or whatever stay at the camp. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's why um, I told him, send me a message. Uh, so if he does, I'll have him contact you. Yeah, I think while he's here, though, um, I think one of the nights I've already mm -hmm. like allowed someone else is going to be meeting his day and change the meeting, so it just depends on what day he wants. So. <clears throat> oh, 
Daryl, did you want to talk about the shutdown of the DHS? Is that something for tonight? Or? Uh, let me... <coughs> Let me see what the latest update is on that. Right. Let's talk about the Pledge of Allegiance pledge, yeah. thing. And... Uh, Mr. Freeman. Hey, Daryl. Hi, Daryl. Isn't that cool, this uh, that calculator thing? Like, yeah. Decide who you should be roommates with? No. I haven't uh, tried it yet. I saw you guys doing it, though. Oh, yeah. Derek should room with me. I should room with you. <laughs> How long does it take to do it? Like a minute. You click on it, and then click approve, and then, like, it calculates stuff using your oh, likes and mutual friends and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Things like that access to my profile. I'm gonna pass. It's cute though. I thought it was gonna be like a quiz or something. I thought it was too, but I was like, eh, screw it. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, silly picture from that Graham posted. Everything in this pic is made of Snoop Dogg. <laughs> what? It's a picture of a sun and a tree with apples on it, and everything is just squished and like recolored pictures of Snoop Dogg. It's just silly. Okay. Yeah. Just made me laugh. Oh, have you, you seen that blue and black dress picture floating around the internet? Please it's don't like, mention that dress. I didn't look at it. Half the people see this as white and gold. And Wired did a, an article explaining the science of why some people see the dress as white and gold. Okay. I mean, I saw some pictures, but I never took a close look at it. Yeah, because it's horribly lit. Okay. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say out of focus, but, you know, like the backlighting is horrible. You know, you could see how somebody would be like, oh, yeah, it's uh, this in a shadow.
I'm so glad they brought today now back. Hmm? I said I'm so glad they brought today now back. Mm. Today now is a onion series. Oh right, right, right yeah. It's, makes fun of the morning television talk shows. That's right. <laughs> All right. This is Free Talk Live, and we pledge to you that we will never say the Pledge of Allegiance on the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's where we're going next. Pledge controversy in. Portland, Maine. And Danica, you've got the story. Of course, you, the listener, may call in and bring up anything toll free at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And of course, don't forget to join us online over at freetalklive.com. Uh, so Danica and Daryl in here with me. I'm Ian. And let's go into the story, Danica. Where's yours from? Where's, what's the source? This is from the pressherald.com and it's, okay. uh, originating from here in South Portland. Well, not here, South Portland, yeah, but Portland. a long way away. Three hours. At least. It's not that far away. In New England, three hours is a long way. Cause uh, all the, you know, windy roads and everything. Well, yeah, but yeah, I came from a place where it took me eight hours to get to the nearest biggest city. So, <laughs> you know, I consider three hours to just be kind of like, oh, it's just a small hike. But anyway, relative to anything. Uh, it's a story about three top students at South Portland High School. Four little words were added to the daily invitation to say the Pledge of Allegiance and a provocative Facebook post that provided an unexpected lesson in the politics of the freedom of speech. Senior class president Lily San Giovanni sparked community outrage in January when she changed the way she invited students and facility members to recite the pledge. At this time, San Giovanni said over the intercom, Would you please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance if you'd like to? And it was the last part that she added, correct? Those four words, if you'd like to. Okay. And this is offensive. And what's the problem? It was the latest salvo in a months-long effort by San Giovanni and some of her friends to make it clear that reciting the pledge is optional under state and federal law, so students cannot be forced to stand and say it every morning. Although no students have filed formal complaints in several years, San Giovanni and her friends said they and other students have felt uncomfortable or pressured by their teachers to say it. So, I, I knew people that got detention for not saying the pledge when I was in school. Oh, I'm sure that happened. Well, it's only illegal if you go to court and you can call them on their illegal, you know, oppression of forcing people into saying the Pledge of Allegiance. As, as long as they're able to get away with threatening uh, students and intimidating students and forcing them into detentions and things like that. Well, uh, this was also over 20 years ago. It, well, yeah, but I, I still, you know, it, they're still doing the same things today. I mean, right. No, I, I'm just district. saying that back then, you know, no one would have dared think that a student would take a school to court over something hmm. like you know that that was a very rare occurrence i imagine it's still fairly rare today it is but it seems to be a much more accepted and common practice for people a little to... more common are you sure about that or is it just because we're paying attention to the news stories about it I mean, those stories are likely to come across it, our desk. It could be that. Right, because I suspect that, uh, I mean, if you're young, if you're in high school, you're fresh out of high school, maybe you're in college, and you can recount a more recent story for us about refusing to, to say the pledge and what consequences, if any, befell you uh, for that. I would love to hear your story toll-free at 855 450 free because I suspect that especially in the South and you know the New England and you know other patri I guess there's patriotism everywhere all over the place. Uh, I imagine these uh, these stories are not uncommon. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that there's also been a lot of research done into what pledging to the flag really means, and more people are aware of it and are more courageous in deciding to not pledge to allegiance. But do you have any reason to believe that? I mean, you're, are you speculating or do you actually believe that that's true based on some evidence that I'm people not saying, are more informed? Well, I, th I think in general people are more informed. I'm not, you know, I'm, this is just, you know, kind of thinking in my head that's what may cause more controversy is that 
people are more aware of what it stands for and are more okay with not having to say it than they have been in recent years where it's just been, oh, you don't dare, you, you, don't, you don't dare disrespect the well, like that. Well, what do you think these girls' reason is? Let's see. The addition, uh... Because I, I, I know what it is. For them, it's the, the under God part. Right. That's one of the biggest reasons that there has been a lot of controversy about not pledging to it. It also has. But that has efforts. nothing to do with you know people. That has nothing to do with people actually understanding what the pledge of allegiance is. You know, and, and what the pledge of allegiance is is an indoctrination pledge. I mean, right. It well, was so, written by a socialist. But it was it was written like several years after the United States actually became a country. That's correct. Uh, it was it's it was over a hundred years. Right. After. Exactly. It's promotes nationalism and it has racist and sexist roots. You know, those are other reasons that people shouldn't be necessarily pledging to a flag. Um, but going forward with the story. But the point, my point is that the people who are objecting to the pledge based on the under God have no problem saying a pledge. They just have a problem saying the pledge as it stands. So they would be happy to pledge their allegiance to the United States. They just don't want to say under God in that pledge. So rather than simply omit that, they're making a bigger show of it by not participating at all. And good for them. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, that's that's where one of the places where I started with the pledge was, was objecting to that. Um, but actually, I can remember being as young as elementary school and just inserting different words in there, like, you know, pledging to the USSR and things like that, just because I didn't like being forced to stand up and say this thing. I've, I've sort, of, sort of always bristled at it, and then over time learned more and more about it, and it became even more and more objectionable sure. to me. But I don't think these girls are really, like, objecting to the entirety of it. I guess. Well, and some people do object to the under God part. Some do object to the racist and sexist roots. Some object to all of them. I mean, people have different reasons for not wanting to pledge the flag. Now, tell me about the uh, racist and sexist roots, because to me, I sure. don't really know those off of hand. That's, those, that's new to me. My understanding of the pledge is it was written by a uh, Christian, so-called Christian socialist, basically a Nazi, a national socialist, uh, named Francis Bellamy. He was a flag salesperson. And it was his desire to sell more flags and also inculcate uh, the people of the United States with a love for the states. And he actually, he wrote it not saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. It was, I pledge allegiance to this flag hmm. and to the country for which it stands. So it could be used anywhere? So that it could be used anywhere. Because he was selling more than just U.S. flags? <laughs> <laughs> Most flag salesmen do. Wow, that's interesting. I never really thought about it that way. Well, when, the, when Bellamy originally wrote the pledge in 1892, he considered adding the values of equality and fraternity to the, into the recitation, but he was discouraged from doing so because it seemed that too many Americans, usually those in leadership uh, positions, were opposed to equality for women and African Americans. So they didn't want you know, women and African Americans to have these kinds of ideas. And in the 1890s, fight. there were also a bunch of people that really hated the Irish and the Chinese and Italians and Catholics. So, you know, it, it wasn't just, you know, women and black folk. Well, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily... Is that bigotry as much as it is just him trying to parlay his product to the to its intended audience? I mean, uh, odds are good that uh, uh, I want people to buy my thing, so I will market my sales pitch to get the widest audience possible. Sure, and definitely. All right, go All right. on with the story. Yeah, going on to the story, the addition of if you'd like to inflame simmering opposition from staff members who had been wrestling with the pledge issue since June. It also triggered an emotional anti-immigrant backlash in the community and left San Giovanni and her friends searching for a way to carry the cause forward. Wait, what does adding the words if you'd like to have to do with immigrants? Well, I imagine that they'll talk about it further into the story. The reference to under God makes us uncomfortable because it's a public school, San Giovanni said. It has nothing to do with our patriotism. We want to really enlighten our students. We believe that they should be learning what the pledge actually means and choosing whether to say it. So supporting San Giovanni's campaign are two other top seniors, Gabby Farrell and Morgan Turner, who led the student senate and are the student representatives on the South Portland School Board. All three teens along with the high school civil rights team and believe that students who have different religious or political beliefs shouldn't feel compelled to say the pledge. Well, good for her. I mean, she's like the class president or whatever, which... 
is a kind of an impressive thing for someone in that position, if you will, to take kind of a risky viewpoint here. Uh, so kudos to her, and I guess it's good that she's got some friends backing her up. Uh, more coming up here about this story. The I've got this, the same thing pulled up here, and the next section is complaints from the community. That should be interesting. Uh, so yeah, 855-453-855-450-3733. You can share your thoughts on the pledge. And did you ever not say the pledge when you are in government school? How'd that go for you? Tell your story here at Free Talk Live. So, Danica, I have got some concerns um, with you reading things on Free Talk Live. And uh -huh. I, this is not easy to, to communicate. But mm -hmm. the way you speak, it you leave out, like, parts of words. And I don't think you're intending to. It's just kind of the way you talk. I know I did that and, a couple weeks ago. Was I doing it just now? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah, it's just kind of the mm -hmm. way you... Have you noticed, Daryl? Uh, I've noticed things that didn't really sound like they were making a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So it, I, I don't, you know, it could just be a poorly written article. It could have been that words were being left out of it. It's just not entire words, but like when you say words, they don't, all the syllables don't come out. Like, I don't know if it's because you talk fast, but you just mm -hmm. kind of like, you're, you're breezing through and you, you do it also when you speak normally. Um, but in the in the article, it's making it worse because it's going okay. on for uh, for longer. So it's it's difficult to if you're listening carefully, you can follow what you're saying just by getting sort of context of the the words that you are speaking properly. But there's um, and I I wonder if you were to listen back, have you ever listened to yes, on yourself shows. on the show? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I don't know if you will notice it because you know, it's just how you talk and you don't. Um, enunciate I guess properly okay. all of the the words and there's not like a quick fix for that you know like mm -hmm. last week we talked about uh, verbal crutches and I haven't noticed you saying uh, yeah I, I have been actually trying to work on tonight. it um, so that's good but you know becoming better at actually enunciating words is probably a more involved process okay and um, I just I'm concerned that people are going to have a tough time following this story so I hope you don't take it the wrong way. No, but. I don't. I, I, I thought I was you know, reading it slowly and you know, pronouncing it better, but maybe I'm not. There's just, like, le I don't know if it's leaving out syllables or just, you know, leaving out vowels or consonants. I'm not really sure exactly how to describe what it is you're doing. But um, anyway, I'll take it over from, from here if you okay. don't mind. Yeah, that's not fun. Just because it's a little easier. And then you can jump in with, with comments. And... Um, I wish I had more constructive cri critique for you on that. That's. I wish I could give you something more than that. No, I'll um, I'll try and keep that in mind because it was you know I know that there is, and I and I don't know if it's some sort of impediment or what kind of issue it is, but I you know am aware of it and I'm, but I just don't know how to fix it. You know what I mean? I don't know if I just need to like reread things over like several times before I try and talk or I'm not sure what what's the fix for it. That's not particularly um, you know a solid plausible idea for being on the radio right like you don't have the ability to read things over several times before it comes out of your mouth you really only have that one right yeah. that one uh, shot at it and uh, I don't know, maybe it's something that you can practice on your own, like take a, a paragraph and read it into a microphone and then have Johnson listen back to it or something like that and see if, you know, and then try to, or maybe you can notice it after it's pointed out to you more more specifically. Like if we had the time and we don't, but if we could I'll after the show. I'll listen to the podcast and see yeah. if I pick it out. I mean, if you want, we can go in after the show and pull up that segment and, you know, try to listen to it. And you'll see how there's just like sort of, it's not full words, but just like portions of words that are just kind of shrunken or, or cut mm -hmm. off or, okay. or whatever. Ten seconds. What's up, dude? Hey. Yeah. 
This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And maybe you're fortunate enough to be sitting back enjoying Free Talk Live here on this Saturday or this Friday night edition of the show and enjoying some Cameron Hughes wines at uh, the same time because these are fine, fine wines and at a really great price, which I can explain to you how this happens. Uh, you actually, when you order from chwine.com, which is Cameron Hughes Wine, you're getting some of the best wine out there from some of the top vineyards. But the thing is, when these vineyards make the wine, they make too much. You know, They make more than they can sell. And they want to sell that extra wine off. And so Cameron Hughes buys the wine from these vineyards, and then he has to put his own label on the wine because he can't sell it as that vineyard's wine because then they'd, he'd be undercutting the vineyard, and that doesn't make sense. But uh, but what he does do is he puts his label on it, and then he marks down the bottle. Uh, normally, you'd probably pay seventy to a hundred dollars for these bottles. You're paying on average fifteen dollars per bottle uh, for award-winning wine in a lot of cases from Cameron Hughes. Uh, it's just you don't know where it's actually coming from. Cameron doesn't have his own uh, vineyard; he's buying other people's wine and then relabeling it, obviously with their permission. Now you get free shipping. When you use code FTL at chwine.com, Danica, you put together a wine tasting event. Uh, Mark asked you to put this together yes. for some of the activists here in the Keene area a couple of weeks ago. And what was your experience with uh, with the Cameron Hughes wine? Well, I had a lot of fun picking out different kinds of cheeses and desserts that would go very well with the wine. It was, and there were even a couple of flavors of wine that. I had never heard of and I couldn't find pairings for. And I picked out Me too. I was really I was really shocked to try something new. And I was too. a little worried because this is the first time I'd ever put together any sort of tasting. So I purchased, you know, some some cheeses that would go well with the ones that were there and then purchased a couple of different cheeses that didn't necessarily have a pairing. And when I put it all together and people showed up, it seemed like it was a very good positive reaction. There were really, really good amounts of both red and white wines. Uh, Daryl was able to get kind of a survey going of which one was tasting the best. We would announce the wines and let everyone know what kind of cheeses that they should try with it. Uh, all in all, a great success. Derek had some film of it. Yeah, that's and right. Everyone had a great time, and it was just—it was so much fun. So, chwine.com, use code FTL. You get free shipping, which is an awesome deal because it's expensive to ship wine. I mean, it has to be packed well and safely, and it's heavy to oh, ship yeah. wine. Yes. So, uh, you know, if you're going to be placing an order, you're going to want free shipping. You can only get that with code FTL. So, go over to chwine.com, use the code in the microphone in the upper left-hand corner, and get yourself some of this awesome wine at a discount price. And if you like a white wine. Then I would recommend getting the triage. Yeah, the triage was mm, great. That was good. that was definitely the favorite of everyone that was there. Kind of a funny name too. Let's go to Sherman, listening in Grand Rapids. We'll talk more about the story here from the Portland Press Herald about the girls and the Pledge of Allegiance. Sherman, you're on Free Talk Live in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Hi, Sherman. Right, because it's idolatry, correct? So what if one of the laws is that you are prohibited from being a Jehovah's Witness? Sherman, are you a Jehovah's Witness? How long have you, as it was, was it something you were raised as? Oh, you became a Jehovah's Witness. Now that's interesting. Uh, were you raised Christian? What was your kind of what was your story there? That's pretty interesting. I mean, th so that's the reason they go door to door because it works. Uh, every now and then they'll get somebody. You considered yourself a free thinker, and then you became a Jehovah's Witness. Why was it so persuasive to you? Well, 
But why would that mean that you would want to become a Jehovah's Witness? There's a lot of great religious books out there. Um, why would that one book be more important? I see. Did you, uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, I mean, have you had encounters with people when you've refused to stand and or say the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, so you kind of uh, keep to yourself so you don't, you don't have those opportunities. Sherman, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Robert in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Robert. Hey, Robert. Mm-hmm. So you went to Catholic school, Robert. Wow. And, sure. I, I don't know any child that's five or six that has a choice in where they go to yeah, school. Sure. That's true. It's, they're pretty much forced into it. Anything else you want to share, Robert? Thanks for the call tonight. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, toll free number is 855-450 free. The story is from the Portland Press Herald. I've got the copy of it here, pressherald.com. Uh, Danica, you told us about this young lady, Lily Sangiovanni, who is the senior class president. She sparked community outrage. So people in the larger uh, Portland, South Portland area upset about this. Her saying on the intercom, she's apparently leading the pledge, saying, quote, would you please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance if you'd like to. So it wasn't like even she was refusing to say the pledge. She was just simply... She was only informing them of their rights. ...giving them the option to opt out. And apparently people are upset. The section here that we're going to get to is called Complaints from the Community. What are people having to say about this? How outraged are people? 855 450 free. Does this outrage you? It's Free Talk Live. Oh, yeah. Some of the complaints are very interesting. Does that article mention that back in September she went to the faculty leadership team requesting a moment of silence instead of uh, saying the pledge? Uh, well, let's see. Yes. I don't know if they mentioned the fac faculty leadership. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, rejected. Okay. 11 to 1. Yeah. I, I found a, an article from the Washington Post that's more a commentary okay. on it. All right. Uh, so if we get a chance, then he's got a couple of thoughts here. Uh,
How long until it, um, it comes back? Two minutes. What is that, Jasmine? What is that? Who is that? My cousin. Who is an absolute bitch. <laughs> uh -uh. And I don't know why she's calling. And she's truthful and kind of a little nervous. <laughs> because she called you? Yeah, that means that some shit went down. Mm. You don't use LinkedIn, Daryl? I do not. I don't either. All right, here we go. Tommy in Glasgow, Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free if you like, 855-450-FREE. Uh, it seems like most of our calls tonight have actually come in on Skype. You can use Skype as well. Skype username here is lrn.fm. You'll usually sound better on Skype, even if, if all you have is your smartphone. You put the Skype app on there and add lrn.fm. We'll approve your request, and then after that, it'll be easy for you to call, uh, call us on Skype. And with you in studio tonight, by the way, it's Ian, Danica, and Daryl. Please don't forget to join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features that are waiting for you on the site. And we'll look forward to seeing you in person at the New Hampshire Liberty Forum. Coming up, we're going to be there in a week, actually. One week from tonight, Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live. Actually, one week from yesterday. That's true. Good point. It does start on Thursday, and Free Talk Live's first broadcasting night will be Thursday night. So yeah, six days, and we'll be live in Manchester, New Hampshire at the Radisson Hotel. It's a new location for the Liberty Forum. They had to move to a new location because the event is just, it was too big for the other hotel that it was in. It's grown uh, year after year, and hundreds of liberty-oriented people coming to the same hotel for a weekend with great speakers, panel discussions. Um, I'll be on a couple of different panels, I think, and I'm looking forward to it. Also looking forward to meeting Free Talk Live listeners who are usually there in spades. Uh, lots of people there who are listeners of Free Talk Live and other shows uh, like Derek J's Flaming Freedom will be performed live there as well. So we'll look forward to seeing you at the Liberty Forum March 5th through the 8th. It's happening in Manchester at the Radisson Hotel. And if you don't yet have your tickets and you meet some simple qualifications, you can actually get free tickets. Here's how you do it. And by the way, this offer technically expires tomorrow, but I might be able to finagle you the free tickets after that. So don't delay. Uh, email me if you meet these qualifications. One, you cannot yet be a Free State Project participant. Two, you cannot yet live in New Hampshire. And three, you have to pledge to be willing to actually attend, if you attend, uh, the, the Liberty Forum. You have to go to the FSP questions session. This is the requirement. You must attend that session on Saturday at 1230. That's where Carla Mora, who's like a super activist for the Free State Project, will field any question that the people in the audience have about the Free State Project. 
And so if you meet those qualifications, you're willing to go to that one session, the FSP question session, you don't live in New Hampshire yet, and you're not yet a Free State Project participant, you can get a free ticket to the New Hampshire Liberty Forum just by emailing me, ian at freetalklive.com. It is that simple. Let's go to Tommy. He's in Glasgow via Skype. Tommy, you're on the air. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, we're not doing the fundraiser yet, and when we do, it'll be you know promoted mostly online. We'll mention it on the air, obviously, but we're not going to be taking donations on the air because that's really boring radio. So what were you calling about tonight, Tommy? Oh, okay. Three children, I think is what you were saying there, and kind of got cut off. Are you still with us, Tommy? Oop, Sorry, internet problem no. lost Tommy. Well, we might get him back here in a little bit. Let's talk about the pledge. San Giovanni, this is the uh, young lady in Portland, Maine, who is the uh, class president. She has adjusted what she says during the, ple the Pledge of Allegiance to give people the option to say it. She says uh, before the pledge on the intercom in the morning, Please rise and join me for the pledge if you'd like to. Would you please ride and rise and join me for the pledge if you'd like to? And she first delivered this altered pledge invitation on January 5th. She and her friends heard positive feedback from some students and teachers, but they were aware that other students and teachers thought it was disrespectful, she said. San Giovanni continued with the four-word addition for a couple of weeks before news of the change spread to the wider community. By January 15th, 10 days later, a Facebook post by a local businessman was drawing a flurry of anti-immigrant, anti-welfare, pro-veteran comments from people who assumed that the students behind the change were immigrants. South Portland High's 900 students include immigrants and the children of immigrants from countries across the globe. So much for the all-American city, wrote Rob Susie of Port Harbor, Maine. Quote, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance is optional for students at South Portland High School, so let me get this straight. We just spent $47 million of taxpayer money on a Taj Mahal school renovation, and the kids of families that probably don't have to pay taxes to begin with can't be forced to stand for 30 freaking seconds to honor the symbol of the country they live and in and off? Are you kidding me? America! That's basically, <laughs> that's basically what he said, is... America. Why are they spending money on a Taj Mahal school renovation? Well, it's government. I mean, they spend all kinds of money on the new middle school here in Keene. How million. much did that cost? Forty million. Forty million. The new jail here million. in Keene. Forty million. Forty million. They were built at the same time, roughly. Yeah. yeah. Well, within like a year or two. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So you, you've got you know two indoctrination camps, both costing forty million dollars a piece. The difference is, in one, they don't tell the kids that they have to say the Pledge of Allegiance. The other one, they, they tell the kid, like, you know, okay, children, you have to say the pledge. You have to be good citizens to say the pledge. I say send them back to where they came from. They must like war better than freedom, wrote one commenter. Wait, hold on. They like war better than freedom, so, like, send them to America? <laughs> this is disgusting and very discouraging for the next generation and good parents like yourselves. Something has got to change, wrote another. Susie declined to comment for this story on January. Susie was the businessman. On January 20th, Principal Ryan Karen asked San Giovanni to stop saying, if you'd like to, or pass the privilege of leading the pledge on to another student. Karen often attends meetings during morning announcements, so he'd been unaware of the change, he said. He learned about it from teachers. They were upset, said Karen. They were questioning whether I gave the girls permission to go around a prior decision of the faculty leadership team. He also received a few emails from community members, and he saw the businessman's Facebook post. That was pretty upsetting, said Karen. It was upsetting to me, and it was upsetting to the girls. San Giovanni complied with Karen's request because she was concerned that people thought the principal was in cahoots with her efforts. Still, she and her friends were stunned that their campaign to inform students of their legal rights was trumped by political pressure from uninformed community members. So I, I wonder if anybody accused these girls of poisoning the well, peeing in the yard, <laughs> and pooping in the neighborhood. That's what a poison the water. 
That's what upset us the most, San Giovanni said. Those people with their racist, hateful views have more power than us. And this school is here for us. She said that it's ironic the community members assumed the students behind the change were immigrants, especially since we're three privileged white girls, she says. She plans to study biology at some university, and the other girls also plan to go to college as well. But it's interesting that she was the one who crumbled under the pressure. I mean, I, she deserves credit for doing what she did, sure. but ultimately it wasn't the people that have the racist views that have more power than her. The principal asked her to stop doing the pledge or pass it on, pass on the torch to someone who would be more obedient. Now, the right question to ask in response to that should be, are you just asking me or are you firing me? Or, you know, you could just try saying no and then see what happens. Right, and to, to me, based on the wording here, it sounds as though it's an ultimatum. You can either do this or you can do this. And if you choose neither, then I make the decision for you. Students. It, it's akin to when you go to court, and I've seen you try to do this before, and I've seen Derek J. do this before, mm -hmm. to where the judge says, how do you plead? Well, I, I don't want to tell you anything. Okay, so I'm going to say not guilty. That's right. Yeah, I don't so, plead. You know, the judge is making a decision for you. That's correct. He's asking you a question. You're not providing an answer. So in this case, the principal told the student, you have two options. But you're, you're presuming that. Uh, the article says he asked her. And the, the reason why he, she, he may not have given her these two options is because as class president, this is probably one of her responsibilities. This is you know, right. the perk of the job or whatever. And so he may not be able to tell her she can't do this. I wonder about that. They can tell you that you're not able to do anything they want. They can. It's whether it stands up if you challenge it. And it certainly looks better she's for him. She's not willing to put her grades on the line for that. She's not willing to put anything on the line. Yeah. She said yes, and she, you know, conceded that she would not say it anymore. But we can talk more about it coming up here in a moment. 855 450 free. There's more coming up here. If you've got an experience saying the pledge or refusing to say it, it's free talk live. <clears throat> And my guess is that it's also one of those asked in the very authoritative way of, yeah. I have to ask you to do this, otherwise there are consequences. I'm going to have to ask you to stop or step down. Yeah, I see. Yeah. And if you don't make a decision, I will make the decision on your behalf and, uh, you know, Presume that you have resigned your position. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> That's fucking awesome. What? This truck. The paint job. What is that? <laughs> it's cats with lasers coming out of their oh, eyes. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> You're a cat with lasers coming out of the eyes. No, no, no. You are a raptor running on the water shooting lasers while riding <laughs> a um, shark. Awesome. Because raptor Jesus. Apparently, a New Jersey court <laughs> recently ruled that the words under God can stay in the pledge. It can stay in. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live. The toll free number tonight is a 55 450 free. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. Check out Daryl's website, fpp.cc. You can go and get written Daryl there. But you can also get audio Daryl over at fppradio.com. And Daryl, uh, what are you producing in the audio realm these days? In the audio realm, I have a seven-day-per-week, five-minute newscast. How long has that been going on now? That has been going on 382 days, I believe. That's awesome. More than a year. Uh, over a year. Uh, have been doing that. It, I've only missed two days. When you went to jail. At, or Actually, three days. Apologies. Three days, and those were days that I was in jail. I also do a thrice-weekly 30-minute podcast, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I do on there is every Wednesday I do an AMA, which is Ask Me Anything. So if you have questions, you can email those, ama at fppradio.com. Cool, and you'll answer them on the air. Yes. All right, cool. So fppradio.com, go and get more Daryl there, subscribe, all that stuff is downloadable for free. Uh, we're going to give Tommy another shot here in uh, the UK. Tommy, in Glasgow, via Skype, you're back on. We had some internet difficulties, so go ahead with your thoughts. Yes, go for it.
Yeah, what's the story? That's true. Tommy, thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. So free number here is 855-450 free. And it certainly is important to expand your horizons. And you can do that by talking to people, but you don't do that by reciting a Pledge of Allegiance, uh, which essentially is nothing more than brainwashing to uh, indoctrinate people into belief in the state. And so in uh, Portland, Maine, there is a young lady who is the class president that has, uh, in when she was giving the pledge, added the words, if you'd like to, to would yeah, you, that that was during the call to students, right, please rise. Would you please rise and join me for the pledge of allegiance? If you'd mm -hmm. like to, and she was rebuffed by the principal who told her that she had to choose. Well, it, we're not exactly sure the exact statement, but the suggestion might be that he might have said something like, "I'm going to have to ask you to start saying it the old a, way." A strongly worded suggestion with two options. Or and you if you don't choose one of these options, I will make the decision for you. Now, under Maine law, it does. Uh, there's this Massachusetts Supreme Court ruled that reciting the words under God in the pledge doesn't discriminate against the non-religious students who hear it. Uh, some students have protested saying the pledge for decades. Under a Maine law in 2011, public schools must allow every student, quote, the opportunity to recite the Pledge of Allegiance at some point during the school day in which students are required to attend, but they cannot require students to say the pledge. A 1985 Maine law stipulates educators shall, quote, impress upon the youth by suitable references and observances the significance of the flag to teach them the cost, the object and principles of our government, the inestimable sacrifices made by the founders of our nation, the important contribution made by all who have served in the armed services of our country since its inception, and to teach them to love, honor, and respect the flag of our country that costs so much and is so dear to every true American citizen. Ugh! Ugh. It's I, I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, terrible, uh, just blanket patriotism and nationalism there without thinking. Uh, of course, you know, the flag is just an object, and the government guys who died in wars did not die to protect your freedoms. They died in the service of politicians. But skipping ahead, there was a new, back in September, when San Giovanni began each morning with a traditional invitation to join her in saying the pledge. Uh, apparently, on September 11th, she and her friends delivered a digital presentation to the school's leadership team, asking to replace the pledge with a moment of silence during the announcements when students would be allowed to say the pledge in their classrooms. A month later, the leadership team voted 11 to 1 to reject San Giovanni's proposal. The president, or the principal rather, Karen, said, I thought they did a nice job. The team thought there wasn't a need to change the process. Some faculty members felt they needed more information. They weren't sure there was a large group of students who felt they were being pressured into saying it. Moreover, said the principal, more uh, some faculty members see this not as students trying to make a change for the betterment of the school community, but rather the cause of a very few students who are protesting the pledge itself. San Giovanni and the le said the leadership team never formally notified her of the decision, so she and her friends decided to add, if you'd like to, in January anyway. So it seems to me that the leadership team, which according to the Washington Post is the 12 department heads okay. of the school. So all bureaucrats. Yeah, basically you know, all bureaucrats. Uh, it, it seems as though they're saying, well, there weren't very many students that came out to tell us that they don't like the current policy. And, well, we just don't have enough information about how this affects anybody. So, therefore, you know, the students that want to America outnumber the students that don't want to America. So, therefore, we vote to America. But, he, but she men, there was a mention in there saying that she never sought formal approval to change it. So, did she... She never received uh, the disapproval. Did she? But did she actually propose to change? To she made the, the proposal to the leadership team to add the four words at the end. Correct. And they never said. Or no to, and actually to uh, to do a moment of silence. I'm to sorry. She did. Yeah. She did the words on her own. So so she adds the words on her own. Now it's interesting that she didn't propose adding that there. So she must have known that they were probably going to say no, absolutely not. So in a way, it seems like that she was just going to go ahead and see what happened. Yeah, I don't know if they'd had that plan at the time or not. 
Uh, Karen advised San Giovanni and her friends they could seek broader student support for their case, gather signatures on a petition, and submit a new proposal to the faculty leadership committee, he said. San Giovanni and her friends aren't sure what their next steps will be. They see a need for a written policy, but their experience with the emotional and complicated responses to reciting the pledge has been overwhelming. Some staff members have sat them down and told them long stories about loved ones who died in battle oh, and other reasons why they love the flag. Gabby Farrell says it's hard every uh, because every time it's brought up, everyone's opinion gets brought up. Some people also don't want it to be known that it's an option because... They don't want it to be optional. So this controversy continues. And there's even a 1943 U.S. Supreme Court ruling that says that requiring students to say the pledge violates the free speech clause. We are out of time for tonight. You can share your thoughts on this or anything you'd like with us tomorrow for the live Saturday edition. We'll see you then online in the meantime at freetalklive.com and at fpp.cc. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So, did Mark ever clarify what he meant by ex <coughs> extra show about C.H. Wines? You know, um, when, where did he send that to us? Was that an email? Email to Ian at Free Talk and Daryl at Free Talk. Yeah, that's, um, I'm guessing he just has to checking his emails because... I tried responding. I saw where you responded. I tried yeah. responding and then got the... Sorry, I'm out of the country auto response. Yeah, so <laughs> I... Um, I just sort of presumed that he meant to do the advertisement for it. Um, I thought he meant do do an after show, do like another wine tasting show. Can you and Daryl do an extra show for CH Wines, please? He asks. Right, so that's extra ambiguous. Show suggests that he might mean an after show, or it mean, or my guess is that he meant another live read. And so I've just gone ahead and scheduled one last night and tonight that wasn't on the schedule. Yeah, okay. you're starting to do the live reads now. That's pretty awesome. So if it means something different, he can get back to us and yeah. we'll do an after show about it. But yeah, I mean, if he wants an after show. Let's just he'd do be an better after off. show on Monday. He'll be here on Monday. No, he's, land, he's getting back at 11 o'clock Monday night. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm in no rush to do an after show about it because okay. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about when it comes to wine. So okay. I'd rather just wait for him to yeah. be here because like, he can talk about it because he knows a thing or two about wines. I mean, all I can really say about it is it's got 50% more alcohol than my boxed wine, and I like that. <laughs> That's really all I've got. It's got more alcohol than the boxed wine. Yep. I like that. Yep. It makes me feel fancy when I drink it. Hello, Jazzy. Hello, sweet thing. Oh. Came up and shocked me after the show. What? Static electricity. Ah. Didn't mean to. What's up, dog? You sure are cute. You are. Very 